Anyway, we won't go there. Uh, Johnny Monoxide, welcome back to the kill stream. Uh oh, here we go. They're Anonymous welcome to the three dollars. Welcome to the kill stream, Johnny. All right, I'll pause it for a I'll, I'll pause it for a second. We will get back to all those. We'll take a few breaks uh, so we can get some uh, chat going in here. First off, for those who don't know who you are, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? I am Jenna Monoxide. I host the Paranormies Present uh, over on Paranormies.com. Uh, we do a live stream on Tuesday nights called the Nationalist Inquirer, where we ship post our way through the news. And then on the weekends, we do a content show. Very good. Now, uh, when did you start the show? Uh, we started doing the Paranormies in 2016, so this is our seventh season. Now, did you did you start up on your own, or what's the history of the the, the lineage of it? And and I know you're part of TRS, and obviously we'll talk about that. Uh, but um, but like, did it start off involved with them, or, or I don't know the history myself actually, so that's what I'm asking. Uh, we started off uh, basically just like four of us on a Skype call, bullshitting about spoop and you know conspiracies and stuff. And we turned it into a podcast, and uh, TRS was just starting their TRS radio stuff, and we were not worthy at the beginning, so we started on YouTube. And we had a YouTube channel, and we got to about 20,000 subscribers uh, when we started getting banned off YouTube for talking about the Holocaust and, the, the, you know, the Sandy Hook and that kind of stuff. Um, we eventually went on to, uh, to TRS in 2017. I want to say it was like our second season we went on TRS. And we've been on TRS ever since. We've had our own. I've had my own website since uh, 2018, Paranormies.com. And we always post it on our own website, but also on TRS. I mean, we used to close the show with, you know, for the right stuff, stop is I'm Johnny Monoxide. Uh, yeah. That's no longer. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I could imagine that might have been uh, X-Nade there off the, uh, <laughs> off the, off the end. Uh, now, um, also, your, the audio is a little choppy. We can deal with it if, if needed, but I don't know if you know that or not. I'm let, me just... my, let me shut my camera off. Maybe that'll help. Okay, that might. No, it sounds okay now. As soon as you said that, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, it was just a little I'm clippy. In hotel. I'm in the hotel. I have hotel internet. So. Okay. Yeah, I know how that goes. You know what? We'll watch it, and um, it seems to be working okay for now. I know how the hotel show, shows go uh, very well, though. Um, so, all right. So, describe the history of your. Well, first off, just talk about your show a little bit too, because I don't want to make it all about that. Like, yeah. what do you usually do on your show, and you know, how did it evolve, and, and et cetera. All right, when we first went, I mean, if you go back and listen to the very first season, because the first four seasons are on archive, um, people ask about it all the time. We've been banned. We've been banned from everywhere because, you know, being on TRS and doing the kind of stuff that they do, uh, you tend to say certain words that get you kicked off of everywhere. So we've been banned from SoundCloud. We've been banned from Zencast. We've been banned from uh, uh, I forgot, Twitter a hundred times. We've been banned from um Damn, everywhere. Apple Podcasts, we get banned from Google Podcasts. Uh, we got banned from Zencast because Google runs Zencast's uh, servers now, I guess. And they're like, no, we banned them. You can't carry them anymore. We got kicked off there. Uh, now we have a new RSS, and um, we have, we host our live streams on pill.net. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's um, a bunch of guys that used to be with uh, Neon Revolt, who was a big Q guy before he fell off the Q thing. And um, these guys got tired of getting banned from everywhere, so they bought a bunch of servers and started their own website. And now we can live stream there and say what we like and not get banned. Now, what's the name of that site again? That sounds like something I might want to remember. Pilled.net. Okay. <laughs> I did like, try to keep up with that sort of thing just in case. Yeah. Oh, um, definitely, definitely. They um they they're like, look, if you're a if you're a libertarian furry, we don't care. You know, if you're a neo Nazi, we don't care. We are all about free speech. We don't care what the speech is. So that's it's really cool. So and there's a lot of there's a lot of like Patriot posting on there. There's a lot of Q posting on there. I don't really care. Um, we're there to, we're there to promote our show and do our show, and um, it's gone over really well so far. Uh, people like the live stream, and uh, we release the live stream as a podcast every Wednesday, like we always have. But um, yeah, well, so we started off. Uh, we're just a, you know, a bunch of guys who were into like you know the paranormal, talking about ghosts and aliens and Bigfoot and cryptids and uh, meme magic. We had uh, two episodes on meme magic way back in the day. We had a certain uh, weave on the show a long time ago. We had um, we did a Pizzagate episode way back uh, when Pizzagate first broke. That was our actually our most downloaded episode. It broke I think three hundred thousand views on YouTube before it got taken down. Um, so we were doing, you know, we were doing pretty decent, and then we started. We did a Holocaust episode, and that was it. I got like, yeah, yeah. the old Holocaust episode. That's what uh, that's what gave me the old kaput kaputs there on uh, YouTube as well. Yeah, we uh, worked the Holocaust debate into the festivities, unplanned Holocaust yeah. debate, and uh, well, they just didn't care for that at all over there at YouTube. 
Well, yeah. well, the Wall Street Journal wrote a front page story about it, and uh, oh, wow. so then they kicked me off. Um, yeah, it was about they were actually attacking just super chats in general. Uh, but I had used the Super Chat um, fundraising mechanism or whatever, Super Chat for good or whatever the fuck it was called, uh, mm-hmm. and did a huge St. Jude fundraiser. Uh, but at the beginning, we had a Holocaust debate between Mark Collett and uh, AIU, which, um, again, was really unplanned. But I kind of knew there might be some kind of fireworks, but I just didn't expect I didn't really expect that. And they didn't kick us off. I mean, it wasn't until the Wall Street Journal wrote an article about it that we got kicked off. So, I mean, honestly, YouTube probably, you know, they didn't really care. But, you know, once they get media attention, uh, they cared. So they they kicked me. They might not have even known about it, uh, you know, when it first happened. But uh, they knew about it when the Wall Street Journal started calling for comment. Uh, and it gets kicked up a notch. So, yeah, that's how I got thrown off, actually, uh, YouTube originally. Yeah, yeah we, got, we got hit with the uh, Sandy Hook Internet Defense Force. It's like whenever you mention Sandy Oh, yeah, they online, don't like that one either. Yeah. A bunch of people show up and they're like, I know somebody who went to a funeral there. How dare you? You know. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. They don't. I just, I just try to. Yeah, the Sandy Hook uh, the Sandy Hook Brigade, they're pretty serious. I've had a couple people on here want to get on and wax poetic about Sandy Hook, too. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I really would rather not. I know they even got Alex Jones. They sued his ass and um, kept him tied up yeah. in court for like five years or whatever it was. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Uh, yeah, now Alex Jones, they, Jim Fetzer, they sued. Yeah, they, they sued the same guys sued both of them. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. It was Noah Posner's father? Oh yeah, I have. I've. Um, I remember that Posner name though, because I've seen him out in the media. Um, but yeah, okay, I do remember the name, but I didn't know it was the same guy, kind of orchestrating yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, they've done some of the. I mean, it's the it's the you know, weaponizing the civil court uh, system, basically. They've done that around Charlottesville, too, uh, quite yeah. honestly. Uh, now, we talked to <laughs> some particular... Some people got out of that lawsuit, though. That's kind of mysterious how some it people did. kind yeah. of just uh, just slipped right out of the old uh, civil noose there. I don't... I wonder how that That's happened. Weird. Hmm. Like, I, to this day, I there's a few people that didn't get caught up. I think it was That's like... True. Uh, That's true. That's true. Pax, myself... And like two other people, I don't remember who the other two were that actually were not named. And then, um, obviously, you know, you know, Mike Enoch got out of it. Uh, it's true. And now, to be fair, you know, not everybody who was there got caught up too. That's that's true. But no, he was no, actually named were, and then got out. No, yeah. they were. It was the people on the, the people on the poster. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. He was one of the yeah. one of the princes there. Now, speaking of Mike Enoch, how did you first meet Mike Enoch? Um, the first time I ever heard of them was on Red Ice. I used to be a big Red Ice listener because of like the conspiracy stuff and all the weird paranormal shit they would talk about. Uh, and then they started getting into Holocaust revisionism, uh, World War II revisionism, with, like the Japanese stuff. Um, and I was really getting into it because I was, I mean, I had already, at this point, I had been getting 30 day bans on Facebook for posting anti Israel memes because, you know, Israel's an illegitimate state and blah, 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 that stuff. All this local memes. Um, so by the time I found TRS, I had already, you know, I was already an evil anti Semite. Um, I heard them and I was like, wow, these guys are from New York. They have a lot of the same humor that I like and and they seem pretty cool. So I started listening to them. Um, they were on Facebook. We became friends on Facebook. Uh, you know, I would send them stuff, memes, content type stuff. Um, they were always fishing on, I know they were, they were looking for, they were farming content off pole at the time, but they were also farming content out of their little groups on Facebook. And I was in one of those groups and, um, Sven, Jesse, and I became friends because both of us are dads. Both of us play guitar. We're both into metal. Um, so we had a lot in common. And we became friends, you know, roughly the same age and stuff. I'm older than he is. But we became friends. And we, you know, we were sending stuff back and forth. And we ended up in, like, uh, I ended up in, like, his little private little hubbox chat. And eventually got into the big TRS private chat. It's, like, the secret chat that everybody got into. But not everybody got into. Excuse me, not everybody got into. Just the coolest of the cool. So um, they were still, like, they still had Bulbasaur. Wait, can and, I ask, it was like, was Ranbot in that chat? Can I just, no, uh, <laughs> no. Ranbot, I don't think Ranbot has ever been in any sort of uh, secret circle chat or whatever you want to call it. I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I just wanted I, that clarified. I, I, I still have no idea. He's the Australian dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I don't even know who he really is. I think I've spoken to him, like, twice. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying. So... You know, um, giving them content and stuff. They were they were doing this sketch show called Saturday Night La Chaim, and uh, they were getting you know, send us in skits that you guys record, and we'll make a show out of it. Well, that show wasn't doing very well, so they tried something else. It was uh, the current year tonight, 
which was like a takeoff of, of the Daily Show or whatever that John, um, uh, what's his name, John Oliver show this week. Yeah. In- so, yeah. And I was the host of that show, so I was pretending to be a libtard who was like getting red pilled by the news while he's reading the news. It's like a really difficult concept. I ended up doing all the writing, all the producing for the show myself. It ended up being kind of a bomb because you know it's kind of hard to do all that shit by yourself. Jews do it, and they have like a whole bunch. Of, they have a whole you know room sure. full of writers, and it sounds good. You know, they have a whole room full of writers doing it for me. It was just me. So from there, um, we started doing the paranormies on the side, and eventually we got on TRS. Um, I met the guys for the first time at the first Mania, which is like a big party that they threw. Um, you know, get together, meet the fans, and meet the podcasters. And, um, you know, from there, we started doing different events, and I just, you know, was, we were just friends. Now, you know, was, my guys. <laughs> now, how did, like, I guess, um, how did the show get picked up by them originally? And, and how did that work exactly? When I say picked up, I, you know, again, I just speak in generalities. I, you know, I've had some of these guys on my show, and I know a little bit, obviously, about a little bit, but I'm not exactly an expert, and I didn't and haven't ever really listened to all these shows daily or anything like that and been plugged in. So I'm trying to, you know, you're the expert. Uh, now, how, how does this all, how did it all work? Explain it to the audience. Well, I went on I went on the Daily Show a couple of times as a guest. When they used to do like a bigger panel, they would have it wasn't just Mike and Jesse and Alex. It was you know Hippel like Heretic and Bulbasaur, and sometimes they have on some other guys. Uh, Atlantic Centurion was a guy that used to write a lot of articles. They sometimes had him on a bunch of you know there was a bunch of guys that they would run through, and it was, there was always different um, you know different kinds of conversation because you had different personalities in the room. Um, Eventually, it just busted down into just Mike, just Jesse, just Alex. Well, they had J.O. on there for a while when Alex was gone. I don't remember how that all worked, but yeah. Um, so the Paranormies, like I said, was kind of a side project. But eventually, they picked up because uh, they wanted more content on their radio network. So they had us and the Godcast, and This Hour has 88 Minutes, and um, I mean, a ton of other shows. that Most of them are gone. Now, when, when the Mike's Wife thing popped up, a lot of the people just disappeared. They're like, holy shit, this guy's got a Jewish wife. I'm out. Now, you mentioned that, and let's just go ahead and get right to it then. Uh, because you mentioned that, and I knew um, of them just from, tw- like, a lot of my knowledge comes from Twitter. Uh, and yeah. so during the uh, 2016 election, uh, Mike Enoch had gotten big on Twitter, and I'd seen some, like, clips from the show or whatever. And I knew of them, uh, but mm-hmm. when I first really heard of TRS, it was when um, his wife was outed as a Jew, uh, honestly. Uh, and that's that was when, when – I, when I mean, when I really looked into them, let's just put it that way. I hadn't really, like, watched their show and stuff. I knew of them. Uh, but when I, like, first really looked into it was was then, actually. Um so when what year was that? Was that 2017? I think something like that. That 2017. That what happened? When when his wife got outed or whatever. Um, yeah, it was before Charlottesville. So Charlottesville was August 2017. I don't remember exactly when that was. Um, I don't. You think it was early 2017? Somewhere around there. So like I knew of I knew of them, but I didn't like like I said I just knew them from Twitter and like that they were a thing. Like I just didn't know right. like you know, the characters and stuff like that. And then I remember reading about it. Um, I can't remember what the date of that was, but I remember just being like, wow, this is crazy. Um, and honestly, you know, I was kind of laughing at it, but what do you know about that? And when that, you know, happened, like what, what was the, what was your reaction first off, I guess? I was like, holy shit, this guy's a parent teacher. What's he going to do now? You know, I wasn't really friends with Mike at the time. I was more Jesse's friend. And, Apparently, uh, a bunch of people knew about it, you know, and they were like, well, I guess it's out now. And then all the, the drama started over that. They had, uh, you know, her family got all involved. I don't, like I said, I don't know all the details of that, but you know, supposedly that was the end of marriage. You know, he got doxxed, and then, um, you know, they got doxxed, and all that came out. And, you know, a bunch of people, again, a bunch of people left. The forum went down for a couple of days, and when the forum came back up, uh, all the people who disagreed with the Mike's new wife were gone. Strangely enough, so it was like the first purge. Um, that was that was when uh, I mean I didn't realize they were doing that, but that was they they do, they do a lot of censorship over there. You know, dissident agreement, uh, dissident opinions get censored. So. Now, first off, there's been a lot of speculation, I guess, because of some of these clips, uh, and maybe I'll just go back and play a couple of them actually. 
Uh, sure. Let me see if I can find these. And of course, they're you know I played them on on the daytime show already, uh, which I guess is kind of what kicked off some of this stuff. Uh, and somebody just linked them to me in chat. Oh, talking about the ones from Telegram from yeah. two weeks ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they include your clip, which we'll talk about that too, but not just yet with Striker and all that. But um, there's also some other. There's the um, the mic uh, the mic stuff. Let me see here. Uh, there's a couple you know, like this one. I use the, the word Jude in that kind of context yeah. basically my whole life. Yeah. And what? even amongst other Jews, I use the word Jew that way. Did you use... <laughs> and even what? amongst other Jews, I use the word Jew that way. Now, hold on, wait. I, I want to play these this way. I saw your face. I, I don't know. The way he said it, it's like he it, it didn't say... Like when when I'm around Jews, like you would say, you know what I mean, like or when I'm around other Jews, right? That's what it means. Yeah, that's what it fucking means. Anyway, so uh, yeah, like you know, that that's basically my stance on that. Um, on, on in terms, but but in terms of who's going to be part of this movement, I, I would say yeah, like you know, it's got to be white people, and, and really Jews should be excluded. And 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 if you're going to let in a, a mixed a mixed Jewish person, then they really have to have have done something to earn that. Mm. You know, and, and I think that in my mm. case, I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, th- th- I mean, that's, uh, I don't know, it's almost identitarian. Like, uh, it, like the Southern Nationalists get a lot of, uh, you know, support from European Nationalists because they like particular nationalism. And there's, like, several, mm. like, open questions in the alt-right. There's, like, the, the pan-Europeanism and the, right. uh, yeah, right. you know, versus particular I mean, nationalism. I don't know that I'm going to be, I mean, that's a, that's a debate that's been around since, since before this Christ, let's not do that tonight. Yeah, that's been a debate that's been around since before this particular controversy. You know, what I, like so, I, I I don't really know that that's um right. I just brought it up because I'm a particular nationalist, and I don't mind. You know, I support uh, other particular nationalists. Right? Mm-hmm. So I'm a you know crush the urbanite. You know, almost... all right, that one's done. Listen, to this. we've had people who've been removed from the forum because they were Jewish or partial Jewish ancestry who had renounced their ancestry in the past. I mean, that's something that's been brought up on the show before. And, I mean, that's an obvious conflict. I mean, is that something that can be addressed? Um, you know, I didn't – I actually had never heard that before. Um, I think that in in these in, in cases like this, it's really – like, you've got to you gotta just – you know, I mean, there's, there's an absolute purist stance, which is, like, they're simply not allowed, in which case I have to go. Um, what? And there's the, the stance that could look at this with like, okay, let's look at this as an individual case and see what the actual individual case now, is. Now, some people have argued that, oh, he's talking about his wife there, but he's it doesn't sound like that to me, man. I'm just going to be real. And again, you know, like it doesn't, does it? Go ahead. Weigh in with your thoughts. I didn't mean to. Oh, it doesn't sound like that at all. And when it first came out, um, I was in the, you know, the, the secret Facebook group and, you know, the fascist, the fascist struggle session. And um, that was when everybody found out that, you know, Mike's wife was Jewish, and everybody thought that. that see, everybody thought that was talking about himself. You know, that's what everybody thought. Oh no, no, no! I'm not talking about myself. We're talking about his wife. And he just simply misspoke. He misspoke. You know, three or four or five times. Right. It's simply, yeah, simply misspoke. He didn't correct himself. You know, he's never corrected that stuff. Um. So, I don't know, man. Uh, my wife, first time she met him, she's like, Johnny, he's Jewish. Right. It's I'm not like, hard to see either. I, I, He's 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 Serbian and Norwegian. Okay, she's like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And you know, I had to admit to my wife that she was right. I mean, it's, it's not crazy. By the way, turn your uh, turn the camera off and see if that helps for a second, because we can still okay. hear it. But it is a little. Let's just see if that helps some. Is that better? I don't want to turn the camera off. Or, uh, anymore. it's I don't know. Let's talk like this for a second. I don't know. It might not even be that. It's still workable. I'm just workable. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still we can still understand you and stuff. I'm just I'm just doing a few little tests here, but we'll see how that does. If it doesn't help, then I'll just tell you to turn the camera back on here in a minute. Uh, okay. Uh, let me look. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch to hotspot. That might actually work better. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. We got plenty of time. Uh, go ahead and switch if you need to. Uh, I know I have a mobile hotspot too. It does help in a hotel situation. Uh, okay. Does it sound any better at all? I'm switched over. Yes. All right, cool. There we go. That sounds a lot better. That sounds... Let's do it like this. Keep the camera off. I don't need the camera. It's That's fine. fine. Man, that sounds great. Yeah, okay. That was like right. being thirsty and getting a drink of water. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, all there right, go. so repeat what you just said, because we could hear it, but it was a little choppy. I just want to get it uh, clearer oh, for the record. Yeah. See, the first time, The first time my wife met Mike, 
and we were leaving. And she's like, babe, he's Jewish, right? I'm like, no, he's not. He's Serbian and Norwegian. I've seen he's 23 and me. And she looked at me and she's like, babe, he's fucking Jewish. Stop it. And it took me, you know, forever to realize this. And I went back and listened to all this stuff and listened to it again. And all this stuff with, with just over time, you know, um, yeah, man, he acts Jewish. He talks Jewish. He sounds Jewish. He's admitted to being Jewish himself several times. And was married to he's a Jew. Like, he was married to a Jew. He right. was married to a benign Brit. Right. Jew. She, was a, she was a charter leader, a charter, I don't know, she was some sort of leader. And the benign breath. Now, in the benign breath, those are the Jewish Freemasons. Okay. Right. I don't care. You can't marry a goy. I'm sorry. You can't. Like, even Ivanka had to convert to marry, you know, to marry Jared, right? Because the Shabbat, right? So yes. Mike either converted or he's Jewish. There's there's like there's no other way to look at it. He's it's the benign breath. Okay. I don't I don't make the rules. They make the rules. I don't make their rules. Well, just how likely is it that his Ex-wife and I breath officer, whatever the fuck, Grand Dragon, right. married right. a goy. Like, I mean, that's just that doesn't seem very likely. He just married some nobody goy, yeah. you know. Or she, you know, and she, I mean, she went to college or was friends in college with uh, one of the directors, the regional directors of the ADL. You know, Scott Levine. Right. That's a, Does that's it account. seem likely to anybody? And again, you know, I when I when the story first came out, I didn't know him at all. So, or I mean, I knew of him, like I said, from Twitter, but I didn't have any. Right you know, personal dealings with him. So I just laughed at it, made fun of it, laughed, like, oh, this guy got out of there, whatever. Uh, and then later on, after I got out of jail, quite frankly, and the show took off and all that, uh, you know, he was still around, and some people were like, hey, you should get him on the show. And I talked to him, he was nice enough, and, you know, I had no problems with, with him, and he told me this stuff wasn't true. He also told me some other stuff about why he wouldn't talk about it, alluding to kids and stuff, which I should, you know, somebody tried to tell, tell me that I made that up, that I lied about that. I mean, that's what he told me. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh it that's what he told me, I swear. And I've been oh trying to... F- yes! I was told that if Mikey... Mikey Enoch has so many allergies that if he had a kid, the kid would literally be the boy in the bubble. Well, that's what that's what I was told, as a, given as a reason why he couldn't speak on it in depth. Damn. And then I told that to somebody. I think I said it on air... Uh, and then Dingo went at me and was like, oh, you're making that up. Da, 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 da. And I was like, well, no, I'm not. I mean, maybe he is. I don't know. Or else he does have kids, like he said, uh, because that's what he told me. Now, again, at the time, I'm like, well, this guy's telling me, you know, he can't go into it because, believe me, I know all about it now. Uh, <laughs> he can't go into it because he's got custody stuff and these people are lying about him. Like, I have no reason. You know, I'm like, whatever. Okay, yeah, he's telling the truth. Whatever. Uh, he's cool. He's nice to me. I have no reason to fuck with him. Um, but... You know, the more you look into it, and then I hear these clips, and I'll play this next clip here in a second uh, that kind of kind of explains it um, as the chaser. Let me finish this one right here. Um, and are there people that are advocating for those people to be let back in or something like that? Or are they just saying that we're hypocrites? Because also, yes, the mystery caller is still common. What are they saying? Yes, the hypocrisy issue, I think. Maybe I'll just go ahead and send mean, the link. I, I understand. I mean, what can I say? Again, one, I didn't know that this was the case. Two, I, I think that despite me being me, I think I, I, I am an edge case here. Um, and I think that I, I certainly, one thing that has been brought up is that there are, there are people that feel like there are people that are softening their stances or, or are not as committed to the idea that they seem to be committed to a week ago. And it's simply out of loyalty to me. And, and it's possible that that's happened. And I, I don't condone that. I don't condone anybody like saying, you know, like basically softening their position on the JQ just to make room for me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't condone it. Like, look, this is a, it's a weird case. Um, uh, I'm here and we did what we did. And in some cases, I think that what I did, what I've done is kind of like, kind of speaks for me. So like if you had a guy that came and said, hey, you know, I'm partial Jewish or I have a, I have a, a wife or a girlfriend that's part- partially Jewish. And um, oh, by the way, I also created a podcast that attracted 100,000 listeners. These are smoking gun quotes to me, dude. Like, I just don't understand. Absolutely, dude. 100, I don't know how anybody can listen to any of this stuff done. and be like, oh, no, he's not Jewish. No, dude, I just don't. I'm, man, look, and I'm not just saying that at all. Obviously, you know, I got some beef with him, I guess, a little bit over the last year or so. But, like, dude, what in the fuck? Like, to me, these are smoking gun 100 quotes. Like, I just don't understand. He's basically saying it. He's basically copying to being Jewish in this quote. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, no. When he does the thing where he says, uh, I don't want people to soften their stance on yeah. the you, he's giving you what he's doing is he's giving you the choice. So you choose to stay around. You chose to be like, okay, no, it's okay. I'll stick around TRS. So you obviously condone it, whatever it is that he is. If he's Jewish or his wife's Jewish, whatever it is, he's making you make the decision. 
Right. Right. He, right. you know, he didn't, he didn't say, you know what? I fucked up. I'm Jewish. I fucked up. My wife's Jewish, whatever. He didn't come out like out and out and say that. And he's like, you know what? I have to go. He, well, it. Yeah. If, if, if edge cases don't count, I have to go. Well, do you, do we want an edge case? Is that who we, is that who we want? Like, you know, like saving the white race is the edge case. Plus, you know what? They're the first motherfuckers to call everybody a Jew. They're oh the first God. ones. Fuck that shit. You know what I mean? Like it, maybe it'd be There's, different if it wasn't like that. I don't even care. You know what I mean? I don't really, whatever. Well, you know what? People can you make their what? own judgments, but like, well, that's one of their main attacks, right? Like Dingo and yeah. all them. That, oh, so-and-so's a Jew or Michael Zimmerman and all this just dumbass fake shit. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, your actual leader is pretty much confirmed Jew. Regardless, he was definitely married to a Jew. We know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. And the circumstantial and outright damning evidence is starting to pile up that he's Jewish himself, yet you still trot that bullshit out. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, you're good, dude. You're good. Well, you know, I mean, in 1.0, I think it was in, in Chicago, the the head of whatever skinhead group in Chicago during 1.0 it turned out to be half Jewish. Uh, I think it was with a guy in Boston, same sort of thing, when his, when his people found out that he was Jewish, he killed himself. So, like, this is what they do. They set up these groups. They put a Jew at the head of it, you know, and it leads them around like, like the Pied Piper, and that's exactly what's going on here with 2.0. You we call definitely call TRS like white nationalism 2.0. And again, you you got a Jewish guy leading the whole thing. 100 percent Now, let me see here. Let me play some of these super chats. Pansy's gonna fix me a nice coffee because she's awesome. She just came and grabbed that. All right, now let me see here. I'll turn those on. Mystery caller is still coming in. Mystery caller. Uh oh. All right, now let's see. Uh let me go back. I'm trying to make sure I start these on time. Oh my god. Some of these. Some of these I've seen. I'm just, uh, okay, yeah, that's where we left it off. Welcome to the kill stream. Okay, good. Let me start here. No, no problem. No problem. Tony Castle sent $3, bro. I'm so sorry about the timing of that. Big fan, Johnny. My bad. All good. We don't ever complain about Super Chats here. Well, that's not true. I've had some people talking shit. Wolf sent $3. <laughs> Speaking of AIDS, who do you think will die first, Bronx or Jim? Oh, wow. Let's start a dead pool. Can we do a dead pool Bronx no vlogger? Does we oh, all wow. Win. That's true. Wow. I, that tiny voice in Sonny's head sent $3. Well, he had to exclude himself at the time because when these clips were recorded, he was married with no plan to divorce, which happened a couple of months later. I know your feelings are hurt, man, but you really think your new friends are trustworthy. Now, do you want to respond to that? Because I don't even know. Oh, that. boy. Um, that tiny voice in Johnny's head. Do you really think your new friends are trustworthy? First of all, the people that called themselves my friends for seven years. Okay. Oh, my best friend may, told everybody never to speak to me again because I made three comments about Stryker in a chat somewhere. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing you do to your best friend. You don't pick up the phone and say, "Hey, man, what are you doing? Like, why why would you say that about Striker in public? Like, what would you do that for?" No, what he did was he had another fucking bitch shit fit like he always does. He smacked. Let me get me started on him and his fucking shit fits. He broke a keyboard. I don't know if you know this. Back now, who is this? Started, what are you talking about? Sven. Jesse, okay, okay. So I was making sure. I just wanted you to clarify for the audience. No, no this is, this is uh, Sven Sontag. Right. Sven, that's Sven. what I thought, but I just wanted you to clarify. Go ahead. Um, when the Christchurch thing happened, I was working at my job because I have an actual job. I'm not an unemployed podcaster. Um, no offense, Ralph. Now, wait uh, a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. No offense, no offense, no offense. But uh, I'm, I'm not talking about you. I'm not mad at you, bro. No, no, it's um, fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I'm at work, right? And the Christchurch thing happens, and I'm like, what happened? A dude went to a mosque and live streamed himself shooting it up. I'm like, that's fake. I don't even want to talk about it. It's fake. So I said on my in my Facebook group, I had a paranormal Facebook group, and I said, I don't even have to look at the footage to know that the Christchurch thing is fake. We'll be live streaming tonight. Jesse saw that, and it was like during the middle of recording the Shoah. He had a fucking shit fit, smashed his keyboard live on camera. It was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen a grown man do. <laughs> he smashed the keyboard because he was mad because this is what happens when white people are pushed too far, Johnny. They go to a church and shoot old people. Don't you get it? No, that's not. Anyways, so <laughs> that's, that's the kind of shit this guy does. So when he, when, he, when he found out about this, instead of calling me, he had a shit fit and told every single person that knows me, including people I know IRL and that have kids who are no longer friends with my kid because of some petty little fuck? fucking stupid shit. Wait, wait. Look how petty these fuckers are. Why in the fuck? Hold on. Dude, I have been cut completely out of everything. IRL friends, people that know my wife are no longer talking to my wife because of this shit. Like, we went from, when I got doxxed, I lost my entire fucking family, dude. When, oh, Johnny's a fucking racist Nazi? Oh, that's it. We're never talking to him. My kids don't have cousins, okay, because of this shit. And these guys cut me off from everything else because I talked to somebody that Jesse doesn't like. So I'm a traitor. I need to be cut off. I mean, he's a traitor to TRS. These people act like a cult. They're a cult. They're actually a cult. 
and their cultists listen to their screamy little bitch leader and literally cut me off. People who I actually went to their house, I got fired in February for who I am because somebody found my SPLC page because I have an SPLC page and an ADL page. I literally said the N word on a podcast about 12 times back in 2016. And because of that, I get fired constantly because I have, I'm the fifth worst person on the face of the planet because of that. Okay. When you look up, when you, when the first thing you Google about somebody is the SPLC and it's a hate watch and it's like, your whole job is like, no, we can't have you around. Right. So this happens to me constantly. I got fired in February. I went, these people were like, dude, Johnny needs some money. Dude, come help me, you know, renovate my house, put in some electrician, put in some lights for us. So I went out to their place, did some electrical work for them. You know, they helped me out, paid me cash. It was really nice of my friends to do that. Um, stayed at Jesse's house. That's how, that's how close I've stayed at his house in, in this community that has a synagogue less than half a mile away. Um, which is interesting. This is a whole story in and of itself. Uh, a month later, a month later, instead of saying, hey, dude, why did you say that about Stryker? You know, no, he told everybody to cut me off. And those people that had actually employed me and did, you know, were friends of mine, they don't speak to me anymore because of this shit, because of some petty fucking bullshit. That's the kind of people these fuckers are. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Dude. The, Go ahead. No, uh, I don't want to stop it, you. Go ahead. You no, know, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, and, and, and then I get fucking threatened. Oh, it's just some guy online talking to shit, Johnny. No. No, I don't take it. I don't take it as talking shit when somebody who's met my wife and children sends me death threats online. Somebody I know who has a violent streak. The guy who sent me death threats actually live streamed himself and another person beating up an old Jew on Facebook. That's the kind of person. So I don't trust that person to not be stupid enough and do something stupid. That doesn't. So I, I sent the screenshots of that to fucking Jesse, and instead of doing something about it, he deleted the message and blocked me and then proceeded to make fun of me for it to other people in his little private chats. Like, dude, dude, you, do you understand that a guy who has a criminal record is the assistant leader of your, a node of your little white nationalist national network. And he's threatening, you know, to kill somebody. You don't think that maybe you might want to say something, you know? No, it's a joke. It's just fucking words on online, Johnny. It's no big deal. You're just overreacting. Now you mentioned Stryker, uh, and I, and I have That's to shit. Yeah, well, I, I'm gonna. I, I want to go into that some too, and we'll double back on everything, of course. Sure. Uh, this is just you know um, for a stray run here. Uh, but you mentioned Stryker. I have to say, I got along with uh, with uh, with Mike Enoch and most of these people until Eric Stryker, uh, and he's always just been. I, I, I don't know how to describe. I guess. Um, uh, he has a very high estimation of himself. Let's put it that oh way for God. one. Uh, he's, and he's an idiot for another. Uh, but uh, which makes it much worse. Uh, <laughs> at least if he wasn't an idiot, you know, maybe you can take some of this. Some people are really, really smart and really, really talented. You can put up with a lot. But uh, mm -hmm. the guy, and he's and he's very malignant uh, too. Uh, cool. Locker room cancer. I use the term to describe Worski, uh, and that's not your thing. That's something I got going on. But uh, I think I would use it to describe him as well. He seems to be. Whoa. Kind of that, when, that when striker person. showed up that's when tiara started like spiraling down like they've lost all their original listeners all their original friends like the tight-knit group in the facebook group like they, these guys that actually went on the show on the first and second or how, like the first 40 or 50 episodes or whatever when they would have their friends on you know and it was actually like good conversation none of those guys are around anymore and none of them like them no, they're all like dude striker came around and ruined trs yeah, and that and just I heard from somebody who knew Stryker a long time ago. Uh, is a very awesome person. Um, he told me, he's like, man, he's like, be careful with Joe, dude. He's very, very ambitious, but he fucks everything up. I was like, oh boy. So that was that was back in 2017, and then, dude, Stryker came in, and all, it was Mike, Mike, and him. It was drinking buddy nationalism, and those guys. Mike's fucking Mike's opinions started changing and what he was talking about started changing. And yeah, dude, it was, ugh, it's just like the, the, the content on TRS has come completely around. I mean, and it's because of striker and again, all their friends left because of striker, he, he pissed off everybody with his basically communist, you know, rhetoric at all times. Now, what is your history with him? We played your story. Maybe we should play it again. Dude, he he like he thinks he's like, you know, we're buddies because I'm friends with Mike, right? So I'm automatically friends with Stryker. First time I met Stryker was at a bar in Manhattan with Mike. He comes up, he's drinking shots of straight vodka, and he wants to go beat up Jews. I'm like, no, dude, I'm not doing that. I'm having a beer, and we're going to go. i got to drive to Maine. 
I'm just stopping through to see Mike. Like the first time I met him, he was like doing fucking crazy shit. Um, and then I didn't see him for a while. I just knew him online. Uh, and then I saw him again at another thing. I saw him at another thing. And every time I'd see him, it was just, uh, you know, it was just the grownups and stuff. It was cool. You know, he's like, whatever. But I brought my kid around. There was a, it was a, a family barbecue thing. It was like a 4th of July deal. And he comes up, he's like, hey, little Johnny, come have a drink with your Uncle Striker. I'm like, Joe, knock it off, all right? He's not, he's 13, leave the kid alone. Oh, come on, come on, Johnny, let him have a drink, let him have a drink, come on. I'm like, dude, no, <laughs> leave the kid, like, mother's right over there, dude. You want, my, you want my wife to come over here and slap this shit out of you? What's wrong with you? My wife's half Italian and half Irish, like, you know. <laughs> it's about to get fired, so, yeah. What's that? I said it's going to get fiery, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get fiery. And you, know, you don't do that in front of somebody's fucking parents. You're, you're not my brother. You're not his uncle. You know, you don't do that. And it was one time, okay, then he kept doing it all day to annoy my wife. Then the fucking next, uh, then there was the fucking, uh, the party with the steak, with uh, the roller yeah, skating thing. And the steak at the fucking By the way, diner, who even right? does this, first off? Who even does this? Like, this would piss me off. Not even that it's like the biggest, I mean, you know, more fucked up things can happen to you. It's just like, who even does Yeah. If he wanted, if my kid wanted a milkshake and yeah. I told him no, I'm his father. Right. And I told him no. If you were actually my brother, Mike. Sure. No, but you're not my brother, Mike. My brother, Mike, can get away with it. You can't. You don't even fucking know me to be doing that shit. Right. Not that, dude, this guy has done this before. So the first NJP barn meetup, the very first one, I took the wife and kids because, you know, bring your family, right? You know, NJP, yeah, family, you know, friendly. Yeah. We're not supposed any drinking. Striker, of course, pulled his bottle of whatever <laughs> he was out of his fucking thing. Dude, the guy's been carried out of events before, right? And they had a mania in Chicago. They had to carry him back to the hotel where he stood on his balcony and screaming the N-word at 3 in the morning. It's so fucking based, dude. It's so based, right? To be obliterated out of your mind at 3 in the morning screaming the N-word on a balcony. It's totally. That's the kind of guy I want, you know, as as a chairperson for for my political party. Now, what about the political party, the NJP, oh God, the LLC? Well, I was no, I don't know the. Uh, it's an LLC. Organized, yeah, that makes sense though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know. That doesn't sound, most political party. parties aren't organized that way, though, but. Right, most political parties organized as a PAC or a party. Right. Like, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, FEC disclosures and stuff. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff, yeah. It's usually not a business. No. It's, an LLC. it's a business. Mm. You know, I think, uh, first off, what do you, I, I mean, what was the idea that made them want to do that in the first place? I have, like, I have no idea. I think it had to do with Stryker. I mean, I, honestly, honestly, I don't know. Dude, I heard that Stryker, so you want to talk about fucking delusional? Stryker said by 2028 that NJP would get 10% of the vote. <laughs> Dude, you know, uh, 10 is 10 is um is uh oh, what's his face? Not not Ron Paul. It was uh, was Ron, uh Perot, Ross Ross Perot. Perot. Yeah, Ross like 12%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, if they pull if, if they pulled 10%, there would be daily stories about how they were a threat to America if they were anywhere getting any, That's not Dude, they didn't even have they did a protest. And they're like, the media blackout of NJP. What media blackout? There just wasn't anybody there because nobody cares. Nobody cares that 12 people walked around the sidewalk in front of City Hall. Right. Nobody cares. That's the kind of shit, that's the kind of shit that like Tariq Nasheed pushes. You know, it's like white race hustling. Plus, there's no reason. Flaherty died. As soon as Colin Flaherty died, his body wasn't even fucking cold yet. And TRS was doing the fucking black crime thing the way Colin Flaherty did. The thing is, I mean, it would be different. They're just going up and walking to the, what was it, Walker City Hall or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. It's like there's nothing going on up there. Whoever. Well, the reason, and don't get me wrong. Like, these crimes are, they should be hate crimes. Like, sure. Justice, they should be. Well, look, a, a little girl got killed by a black dude. It's fucked but, up, but what I'm yes. saying is the reason nobody cared is there wasn't really anything going on up there. We I had 2,000 people over watching me this past weekend is because I was in front of the Supreme court after Roe mm. v. Wade. Right. Like, I mean, it wasn't right. cause I was just walking around, you know, city hall after the city council meeting or some shit like that. There would, there would, that wouldn't have happened. Right. Uh, maybe if they would go do something there, they seem to be too afraid well, not to do anything like that. They're but, doing stuff. They protested the Waukesha, yeah. you know, the black dude that ran through the crowd and they made the documentary that came out three and a half months later. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and then they had this thing, and Jesus, did you see? Have you seen the pictures of this last one? No. Oh, actually, um, striker, I, somebody doing like the it. Cholo's throat. I'm like, bro, you're not doing yourself any favors. You look, you look really Puerto Rican right now. Somebody send it. Actually, I was gonna say no, and that's not true. Yeah, it was coming by. It was on TRS exposed. Yeah, that's where it was. Holy shit! This guy looks where like an TRS extra. TRS exposed. It's not me. First of all, I promise you, it's not me. I've been accused of it being me several times. That's good stuff. Uh, it is good. He looks like an extra out of Greece or some shit. Like, Dude, he's like the wearing Hispanic a white version. T -shirt, nothing underneath it. 
right? And this is how you go down to like make white people look good, right? This is you can see your nipples. This is like nipples protruding very no, disrespectful. It actually, is just very disrespectful. Yeah. All right. That's true. Uh, oh, let me. <laughs> Uh yeah, there's another photo I guess. Uh, so, so the deal with Striker is he just did shit that was disrespectful as a parent to me and my wife enough times, and I said shit to people. Why didn't you say something? Because if you say something, it doesn't fucking matter. Because that's Mike's drinking buddy, and nothing's ever gonna happen to Striker because that's Mike's buddy. Jesse actually, uh, over the winter time before he went flipped, and now he's like Striker's the man. Uh, he actually recorded a voice message, and it was like. Fucking striker has turned Mike into a bloviating retard with bad takes and bad ideas. It's all fucking striker's fault. And there's nothing anybody can do about it because he's Mike's fucking buddy. And now all of a sudden it's like, no, once you realize that striker's correct about stuff, you just come around and everything becomes correct. That sounds like somebody who's got fucking Stockholm syndrome to me. Yeah, striker is just a fucking retard. Striker. I don't I don't and know. This how picture to say is it. literally the meme of where the fuck is your chin? Yeah, he's just a retard. I remember, so Mike Enoch debated Destiny on the oh, kill God, stream. Oh, that was terrible. Well, look, I mean, it was, you know, making judgments on who won, but, you know, I thought it was a good debate, uh, and I thought it was, like, a little drier than I thought it would be, but yet they were both, you know, kind of yeah. given what, you know, putting putting some stuff out there, I guess, uh, throwing some bars back and forth. I thought it was fairly good, but then uh, Stryker messaged me and said, I think I could do better. And I was, I was like, I want to go go with Destiny. I was like, okay. Uh, and so I set it up, and then he got absolutely bodied by Destiny, uh, at least for the first half for sure. Uh, then maybe recovered a little bit by the end, but pretty much got embarrassed. No, uh, he got demolished, dude. I mean, I'm being charitable even now. I think he got bodied, yeah. But, you know, I'm trying to be fair. I don't want to act like, you know, I'm com- you know, completely biased or whatever there, but. Well, mm-hmm. how would you describe it? You think he just got like, destroyed? Yeah, I mean that's how yeah, most people think. Absolutely yeah. destroyed. And then he blames me it? for it, though. He blamed me for it. Why did he blame you? I don't know. He thinks I was buddies with Destiny and you're that I fed him to you're Destiny. Dummy. You're the dummy that doesn't know how to doesn't know how to debate. You're the one that starts off your conversation yes. lying. You know, like he's a terrible debater and he and he rarely tells the truth. So he got mad at me, and then I was suddenly like blackballed. Basically, oh where nobody wants to come on the kill stream now, and and I, you know, promoted those guys and had them on. Well, you know, Mike a- is the cool. You know, TRS is the cool guys, man. They're the cool, you know, Nazi guys that kind of have a political party and like wear jeans and sport coats. Yeah. You know, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's super envious there. Um, now, it's, but yeah, that's what happened with my shit. Where I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, um, and this guy was mad just because he lost the debate. It wasn't do. even that big a deal. Like, and they don't care about shitting on people. Then they don't care about people that have left. Like, if you're gone, if you've left, you are you're dead to them. So you, you know, you are. It's fine. Whatever happens to you, um, like, dude, people have lost their jobs. People have lost their families because they've listened to these guys and changed their political views to follow what these guys' political views are, and. What if they're like, you know, oh no, Mike lost. Mike got doxxed and lost his shitty fucking job, a coding job in fucking Manhattan. Oh no. Like, he doesn't have to code anymore. Now he's the fucking chairperson of NJP <laughs> and people fucking people send him money because they think he's gonna save the white race, you know. Um, that's so, that's such a sacrifice he made. He made such a sacrifice. If he's a coder, why does his website look like a fourth grader? <laughs> creator's computer science project. Like, dude, look at my website. We just we just rebuilt our website, by the way. Check it out. Oh, actually, I pulled that up. Let me pull that up uh, because I pulled it up on my own, uh, and I was actually thinking that now that you mention it, where I was like, "Damn, that website looks really nice." Hold on, let me pull this up. Thank you. Yeah, this is what happens when you get a website designed by an actual web designer. I thought Mike was a web coder. I didn't know that their website was supposed to be a radio dial. Uh, it didn't come up here, but it comes up. On my, yeah, there it goes. The paranormies. Yeah, because I pulled this up. It's supposed uh, to be an oven joke. I don't know. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, see, that's a bad logo too. Yeah. Uh, because somebody asked me where they could find it because they were like, I haven't been able to find the show since they took it off the TRS feed or something like that. It's always been. It's always been on. Uh, it's always been on paranormies.com. Yeah, you know, I always hear stuff like that too, and I'm like, man, you didn't know about X. I, I still get that on my show too. Something will have happened where it got interrupted somewhere. Like the podcast hasn't been updated for a minute, and probably some people just like, I don't know what happened. Um, that one's not as bad, but the when I got kicked off YouTube or various streaming services, somebody will be, somebody will be like, oh, you still stream? And I'll say, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's just kind of one of those things that happens. You just have to keep people... You just have to keep plugging out it. Eventually, they'll find you again. All right, let me play some of these super chats. Uh, some of them have piled up here on the power chat line. Let's see. Let me go back. 
Uh, welcome to the kill stream. Uh, okay. Anonymous sent three dollars. Mike made a comment in an interview after getting docs that he was married to a Jew. Mike said to the effect, "You would have to make an exception for me when deciding who to accept as members." Did he mean that he was a Jew or his marriage to one? Well, we talked about that. It sounded like him. That, meant that was serious. Sent five dollars. Hey, Ralph. Really enjoy your show and the nonstop content. This is going to be off topic, but there's a That's really okay. important anti-abortion referendum on the ballot in Kansas on August 2nd. We need everyone in Kansas or near Kansas to get out and knock doors. That's all right. Velasarius sent $5 information about how to knock doors can be found at ValueThemBoth.com. Nice. Value Them Both is the pro-life campaign. Please spread the word and Kansas residents please vote yes on August 2nd. Nice. Thank you. Anonymous sent $3. What's your take on the missing 411 incidents? What happened to them and why were they mainly young white German males? What is that? Missing 411 is the uh, David Belides has a whole series of books and documentaries on it. It's where the people go missing from state parks, mostly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of people go missing. And a lot of them are German males. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Do they do a lot of, there's a lot of killing and stuff out in the state parks, aren't there? Yep. A lot of murders. Yeah. A lot of disappearances and people showing up Just you know, mysterious. Miles, miles away, naked and dead. Yeah, just mysterious happenings there. Like being married to a Jew. Fash Gordon sent $3. Did Mike have kids with his Jewish wife? Well, we talked about that. That's what I was told, and either I was lied to or they lied. I don't really. I mean, I'm not trying to, <clears throat> quite frankly, like find them or anything. So I don't, right. really, I don't really care. It's just more one of those things where that was what was said to me in order to say, oh, I can't get into this. Um, mm. now, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's the case. Maybe it's not. I really couldn't say. Maybe it is. Maybe it is either way, either yeah. way being deceptive about your past is like, right. Know, it worked out for some people, it worked out for Jo. He lied enough about his past that like, now that he's gone, like all that crazy shit, like nobody cares. Cause he, well, lied about maybe he'll say he meant just the cust, you know, just like his divorce case in general or something. I don't know. Um, I've tried to find the original. He told me this in email. And it was oh, like look at this chat. Somebody brought up somebody brought up my criminal record from 30 years ago. Oh, yeah, because that's you know when I was 21, I got in trouble for selling cocaine to a stripper. Oh yeah, well I'm I mean, 21. When I was 21, I yeah, I'm, that was almost 30 years ago. Uh, yes, for the things Striker does, yeah, Striker Striker goes into the bathroom at a roller rink while kids, while white nationalists and their children are skating around you. Mike, Mike, and Mike goes in the bathroom with him. By the way. So I've done enough cocaine in my 20s to know what two guys go to the bathroom looks like. Guys don't do that. Unless uh, you don't yeah, they're having a little touch up for sure. Yeah. So like, dude, yeah, fuck you. And who's this? Oh. Long dead fish. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yes. Yes, I did. When I was 21 years old, I made a mistake. I sold drugs to a stripper. I got arrested. Um, I have never done that ever again. It was 30 years ago. Sure, bring it up. <laughs> Trust no bitch. There we go, right there. I know. Listen, I get in trouble for this all the time, so uh, uh, but I'll just say it. I mean, I, I didn't become a Nazi. I'm, just, I'm half Jewish. I didn't become a Nazi to convince my words here. I'm half. He just said I'm half Jewish. Yeah. He literally said I'm half Jew. Yeah. Literally said that. Right. Now let's play that again. I'm just, okay. I mean, I, I didn't become a Nazi. I'm, just, I'm half Jew. I didn't become a Nazi. Like literally. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That so, like was... I said, like I said, that's what they do. They put. They put these Jews in charge of stuff, and now you got two half Jews running this. I mean, Mike's mom was the not the chancellor. What was the thing? It's higher than a chancellor, uh, whatever of a of a private college in Manhattan. And then before that, she was like the provost. That's the word, the provost yeah. for for like forty years at a communist labor college in Minnesota. Like the the woman who in in the in the Andrew Morantz interviews was known as Mike's mother. And only Mike's mother. Like Mike's dad's name was put in the thing. Mike's stepmother's name was put in the article. The brother's name was put in the article. But when they mentioned Mike's mom, it was just Michael's mother. That's very interesting. Very. All right. Now let's see. Let me play a couple of these here. Uh... Jacuzzi sent $3 based wife. You have Johnny. Let's get her a cozy channel. <laughs> Fash no. Gordon sent three dollars. Example of pure J words of version. Mike made trench dressing the symbol of the who white male. Trench dressing was invented by Steve Hansen, a black maid that married a white woman. There you go. I didn't know that actually. 
Anonymous and three dollars was never better. part of any inner TRS circles. Shag it. Also, was the J.O. criminal history and allegations true? All right, you can talk about the J.O. thing because that's been talked about on the show. Okay. Uh, Shag it was, as far as I know, Shag it was never no. Shag it's just a caller. Yeah, and I would be it. shocked if yeah. that was the okay. case. Uh, yeah, um, what was the other question? J.O. Yeah. The criminal stuff. I don't believe any of that stuff. No. I don't believe in any criminal stuff. He just made all that shit up so that, like, if he ever did get doxxed, it would just be like, what the fuck did he say? Okay. He talked about, like, he talked about shooting blacks in South Africa because he was an economist for a diamond company. Like, that's... You're that's, saying that's he was pretty... a fantasist, basically. I'm just saying oh, yeah, a fantasist. Yeah, but he did it on purpose, and, like, like he would do shit on Facebook. So maybe would be like, man, I really wish I could hunt a giraffe. And he would come up, like, four comments later. Excuse me, man, who's actually hunted giraffes here? <laughs> And like everybody's like, oh my god, Jail, you hunted giraffes. <laughs> based, fucking based. And these nerds who have never touched grass or kissed a girl ever are like, Jail is so based, dude. He killed giraffes and he killed ends in South Africa. And dude, then that's how you become super famous in this thing. My my problem is I just told everybody the truth about what I did. I've never, I've never like hidden any of my past stuff. Like the stuff that's in the SPLC article, yes, I got arrested for selling drugs when I was 21. That's almost 30 years ago. Kiss my ass. I know. Let me play these some more here. All right, where is this thing? Oh, yeah, like Eli Mosley was it like he got busted for saying, you know, he killed babies in Iraq. The dude never left New Jersey. You know, that's the kind of shit you get in trouble for. That's why you don't lie about things. Right. It's so much easier to tell true. the truth. It's true. It's one hundred percent true. You don't have to worry about what you lied about for one. Right. Uh, I, Everybody who's ever heard any of my stories knows that every time I tell the story, it's totally exactly the same. Because anonymous it's true. sent three dollars. Hey Johnny, oh, found the show after your first appearance on the Kill Stream. Have been listening ever since. Nice. Much love to you and the Paranormies gang. Very cool. Nice. Thank you. I, like I love that. I like their stuff like that too for the show. Yeah. Absolutely. Fresh cool. Garden yeah. sent three dollars. Example of pure J words. A version Mike made drench trans in the symbol oh, yeah, yeah, of the yeah. white male. Drench transing. We are that. We are that. Thank you, though, Fresh. By the way, over a thousand live Gordon. here in Cozy right now. Go ahead. I love Fresh Gordon. He's a buddy of mine. No, I, I like him too. Much. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to do this. Boogly Woogly sent three dollars. I knew TRS slash NJP was a dead end, but I never knew what a dumpster fire it is. Last I heard, they were shilling the vax slash lockdowns. Oh, man. No, let's see. <laughs> oh, I heard this one. I heard this one, too. Hold on. I'm trying to make sure I get it on. Cling. Joey Jojo sent $3. Do you think Mike is controlled op, deradicalizer, or gatekeeper? Is he too dumb for that? Is he just grifting for retired shekels? What do you think? Um, At this point, I honestly don't know. I mean, like, they've dwindled as far as as far as subs, I mean, they've lost subs, you know, because they, they, they can't process payments. So you have to mail in, I mean, you have to mail in like a money order or you have to send crypto and they actually make fun of their audience for not being able to do that. You know, um, I've never, I've never met anybody that actually talks shit to their audience <laughs> while they're, you know, doing the show. Um, it's weird, but I don't think they're, I don't think they're doing very well. I know they've been, they have to have been getting money somewhere else. And of course, then there's the Bowsman connection and all this it's come to find out that the, all the seed oil shilling on TRS seems to be because possibly because Bowsman is affiliated with a company called Soya Tech, a seed oil company. That's interesting. Now, wait, I didn't know they were shilling seed oil. Oh, dude, they've been like, apparently, uh, I guess McNabb accidentally had a bottle of canola oil in the background and then people jumped on it. That's the, that's the lore of how this seed oil shilling started, but they started a big beef and uh, surgeon general McNabb went in deep on the seed oil, you know, how the seed oil thing is a distraction. Obviously it's a distraction from talking about Jewish power. Everything is a distraction from talking about Jewish power. Um, the world economic forum doesn't even exist. It's, like it's just some phony thing that some conspiracy. Anything they up. don't want to talk about is a, is a distraction yeah. from talking Anything about. Anything they don't want to talk about yeah. that's not power, except for Star Trek, because they love to talk about Star Right, Trek. yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. something they like you to talk about. Yeah. Come to find out that Bowsman, the guy who owned the barn that NJP did all their events in, is, is I don't know the exact level. I believe he's a C-level employee of a company called Soya Tech. Literally Soya Tech, dude. Like, the memes write themselves. Soya, that's perfect. All right, now let me play some of these. Little Johnny sent three dollars. I almost got that stick. <laughs> yeah, it's close. Oh no, we heard that. Three dollars was Chaggett ever? No, we know Chaggett. Come on, Chaggett. That would be funny though. Chaggett pulling the strings. William underscore thirty three sent three dollars. Keep up the great work, Ethan and Mike. Thank you. 
Righty tighty 90 once in three dollars. Yeah, all of this seems to make sense. Honey pie. <laughs> oh, I heard this one too. Anonymous. Thank you, though, Anon. I'm trying to. Let's see. I was checking every part of the There's some. I think I missed. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, okay. I don't know if this one played or not, but uh, I'm going to play it again. Uh-oh, I hear a ring. Anonymous in $3. Why do you think Mike keeps Stryker around? There were stories of them going into a bathroom and sniffling while exiting. No sniffling? Yes. Uh, I think that's why they, they keeps him around. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's got to be why. Yeah, I think you answered it yourself. Uh, now we had a, a ring at the door. Uh-oh. Uh, a Mr. A Mr. Wang Lin was uh, was going to be calling. I wonder, if he, I wonder if he can hear me. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. What's up, sir? How's it going? <laughs> Not too bad. It's been an uh, interesting show here. That's been it? Yes. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Johnny. It's nice to, <laughs> nice to talk with you. It's been a while. It's been a very long time, sir. Um, so I thought this was, I thought this was great to go into, into the, uh, your view of the background here. Um, just real quick. I mean, you know, my background with these people, but just for the audience, uh, my background actually goes back longer than yours. I've known these people since I think 2011 or 2012. Um, so, you know, I've, I've known them a while. Um, and, uh, you know, when the, when the wife thing happened, I was I was very supportive of Mike when that happened. Um, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing now, but that's that's a fact. I, I said, you know, he didn't he didn't know he was going to get involved in this stuff. He didn't. Um, I, I don't think he. I mean, at the time, I said I don't think he was purposely deceiving anyone. He got in, involved in this stuff on the internet, got red pilled about Jews, and he happened to be married to this woman, and I I, I defended him. Um, so then after that. Um, he was involved with the TWP people with um, Heimbach and Matt Parrott and this kind of like what became, because I knew Heimbach going back to when he was in college and he was just doing that white student union thing. And he became like this street marching, you know, like skinhead gang, like a neo-Nazi type gang, Matt Heimbach's group, which was called the People's Worker Party or no traditionalist workers party. Yeah, so they right. became like a neo-Nazi gang. Um and then Cantwell got involved in that. And then it kind of, I, I didn't really know that was going on. I was kind of doing my own thing. and wasn't really following this stuff super closely, but then it all came out in Charlottesville that this is like a, they, they were wearing plastic stall helms and it was like this big violent neo-Nazi street fighting group, right. Involving, involving TWP. And then, and then like the national socialist movement and league of the South. And then Cantwell was, I don't think he had a group, but he was kind of in that like skinhead, and that's when that Vice documentary and everything. So after Charlottesville happened, you know, I was very much optics, optics, optics. You can't go out there and look like neo-Nazi gang members. This isn't, nobody wants to see this shit. People don't like this. Um, and it, it looks like shit. And that's what, that's what, you know, if it would have been, people would have been more sympathetic looking at Charlottesville, that whole debacle would have gone down a lot different in my view. Right. So, if uh, like me. What's that? If everybody dressed like me at Charlottesville, it would have been a lot different. Yeah, yeah. If everybody would just look like a normal person, um, it, it wouldn't have been, you know, this, this whole thing that became like a, basically a part of American history, a big part of American history, you know, a big oh, part of the Trump. Yeah. A, a big part of the Trump, you know, the, the, this thing was hanging over him that he was like a leader of a neo-Nazi gang. So it was really, it was the, it was the worst debate. I mean, you know, I've apologized for it, for promoting it, and I, I should have known more about what was going on with the thesis. But like I say, I knew Matt Heimbach since 2012 or 2013. I, I wasn't aware that he was full on like plastic stall hound, all this stuff with these neo-Nazi groups and so on. So after that, I, I, you know, tried to work with TRS. I said, you know, you can't like, is this what we want? Do we want to be neo not you want neo-Nazism? Like that's the, that's the goal here is like a street marching neo-Nazi gang. And they, they, they kind of told me, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to go into private conversations or anything, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in public that they were like, no, we don't want to do this. We don't, we don't want to do like this. Um, and then it came out that, you know, Cantwell was working with the, with the FBI to get his charges marked down, which is a snitch. There's no, I mean, he's try, he tried to say he was only snitching on Antifa, right, which is like not, you know, if you go to prison, which he's in prison now, and I'm pretty sure they're not saying, well, who did you snitch on? 
You know, that's not, that's not really the way that works. You become an FBI snitch, you're an FBI snitch. You snitch on everybody. And he released video um, that he recorded at Charlottesville, body cam video, that, you know, people got did up on, on video that he gave the FBI and testimony that he gave the FBI. Um, so, you know, I, I, what TRS told me is that they were going to disassociate from all of that. But then slowly, and maybe it had to do with Stryker. I don't know. I, I also know Stryker before this. Yeah, but, he's great um, for you, right? Yeah, yeah. He wrote he wrote articles that were pretty normal, and we would have conversations. And I can tell you, he was a little bit of a weirdo. But he, he you know, he was he would kind of say like, "No, we don't want to be neo. We don't want to be a neo Nazi gang. We don't want to be a neo Nazi gang. Uh, that's not the goal." So um, then, so you know, the years go on to, I guess, only the next year. So, and, and I start noticing TRS is rehabilitating Heimbach. Well, Heimbach had that thing where he um, had sex with his mother-in-law, right? The cuck box. Right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, cuck, the cuck box thing. Yeah. So they kind of dissociated from, because I had been arguing that they should dissociate from Matt Heimbach before that. And then when that, when he had sex with his mother-in-law and then beat up his father-in-law, um, they kind of started to dissociate or did dissociate from him. But then over the next, I guess it's in 2018, they started to kind of act like they were friends again with Cantwell and started doing something, which Cantwell, you know, admitted FBI informant. And TWP, I mean, they seem to be involved. I, I don't know why you would act. I don't know why you would march through the streets in plastic stall homes unless you were somehow connected to the FBI. I don't know how anybody could think of doing that otherwise. So um, I said, you know, I'm not going to be involved. And the other thing is, um, I, I, I shared their shows, and they told me that I tripled their numbers by sharing them on my website. That's what that's what they told me that their numbers yeah. tripled when I started sharing them. So, um, you know, I stopped sharing their site, and I said, "Look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop being involved directly with you guys. I hope you make different decisions than being involved with you know TWP and Cantwell." But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna disconnect from it. And then that audio with Jo, which I don't think was a true story. People say that oh. I think this was a true story that he was caught selling heroin. No, you know that, was, that podcast, excuse me, was a show called Anarchist Gumbo, and mm -hmm. it was literally high and just making stuff up. Yeah, for me, he said he was working selling heroin and he was working for the FBI, and there was a um, there was a background to that. Of he had like a, a, a forum history that went back years of when he was involved in anarcho capitalism that he was saying he was a heroin dealer and all this stuff. So and his story of like agreeing to be an FBI informant and then fleeing to the um, fleeing to South America on a on a private plane mm -hmm. uh, it did, did not sound like a real story. It sounded like his stories of like you know killing N words in uh, yeah. Africa, like right. that was all of his stories. I, that's yeah. It, it's just all, it just all sounded like a bunch of bullshit. But I said this is like it. This is what an FBI informant would would do to get involved in a um, involved in a group. And I, I I called them out. I well I I first called Mike and then he blocked me and said, look, what what is this? What is going on with this guy who's like some kind of freak and is talking about being involved with the FBI? He's talking about selling heroin. He's got this whole other thing where he said he killed black people in Africa. Why are you involved with this guy? What's going on? And you're, bring, you're trying to bring back Cantwell, who's involved with it. We know is an FBI informant. You're bringing back these TWP people. What are you doing? Just give me some kind of an explanation here. And he, he blocked me on his phone. So I went out and, like, wrote about this, um, that I, I think these people are compromised, um, you know, because they, they, they were willing to collapse their business model for d defending this, uh, the, this jail guy. They, they, mm -hmm. didn't, they were willing to go ahead and collapse their entire business model which they, their numbers went straight down after this happened um, in order right. to, to keep this J.O. guy on, on board. And then you have Mike getting removed from that lawsuit um, and, and a lot of other different stuff. And then, of course, from that point, they started just going into being complete kooks where they're, they're promoting, like, lockdowns and vaccines, mm -hmm. they're promoting for Joe, voting for Joe Biden. And but what do you think about, I mean, what was it, what was it like in the background when, when all that stuff was happening? Were you privy to what their discussions were? Well, not really. No. Um, when I, like I said, I stopped listening to the show when Jesse broke the keyboard after Christchurch. I was like, I can't, I can't watch this guy ever again. I just can't watch these guys. These guys are terrible. Like, and all the shit they talked about me and my show, like it's just bands and just jokes. Right. But it was constant. 
Um, so I, I never listened to that show. So I don't know what was going on. I, I would hear it secondhand. When COVID first broke, then the only people on earth to get it right was you, me and my guys, and like Ramsey Paul. That was it. Everybody else blew like the biggest psyop in the history of ever. They completely blew it. And on the other side, they came out with their um, their take that it was because uh, Hasidic Jews were researching MERS. And then the other Jews got scared of these Hasidic Jews, and they locked the entire world down. That's that's why. Like that, that's the most ridiculous COVID theory. And then they they strut around saying that they were correct and that everybody else was incorrect, and they've been right the whole time. Uh, the vaccine thing. Like they just oh, there's no such thing as mandates. Mandates don't, dude. Mandates don't real. Just get a fake vaccine card, bro. You know, mandates don't real. It's just you know these guys who never have any sort of pressure to ever get a vaccine from their boss because they you know they're, they're never going to lose their job because of that. And telling people not to worry about it and then bragging about how much money they made off of Pfizer stock. You know, like I know people personally who took the vaccine just to keep their job and they hate themselves and they're like, but I had to. Like I have my kid has to have insurance. You know. Just, you know, yeah, but then you, you then you go and you brag about this, this anti-white. Everything about the fucking COVID thing was anti-white, and these guys promoted that. Oh, lockdowns are good because then white people won't be working, and the system won't, won't work because the white people aren't there. Once the white, once the system realizes that the white people aren't there, yeah, we need to have white communism. Give everybody Gibbs. Everybody gets UBI. All of a sudden, UBI is popular with these guys. Yeah, they, they're promoting all kinds of weird communist they stuff, and they, uh, they voted against Trump. They said everybody yeah. should vote against Trump. Oh yeah, they they hate conservatives so bad, like they hate conserv- they they hate Christian conservatives especially. Literally, all they do is shit on Christianity, shit on like they're they're hardcore like especially McNabb. He's a terrible yeah. atheist. Um, and like if you're trying to do white nationalism, you need the white Christians. Sorry, but like you do. Even Rockwell and Pierce were like they were agnostic and they were like no we need the white christians but these guys shit all over taking a stick and all that shit you know you're 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 saying people religion dude white people in in america if they're religious they're christian if you want to get white people you want white people awake the dumbest chant i've ever heard in my entire life um <laughs> like re- white people awake really striker that's the best you could come up with aren't you a journalist <sighs> anyway really no, I was being facetious. <laughs> In my experience, no. Dude, dude, I told you, oh, did you guys hear that after the, the stuff came out, he threatened to sue me? No. Uh, I'm not surprised. No, so I, didn't know. I got up to, I got up to go to work because I have a job, and I got up at 4.30 to take a piss, and I just grabbed my phone, and I look, and there's a message from Eric Stryker that was sent at 3.35. Because, you know, 3.35 on a, on a Thursday night, that's usually, you know, that's that's usually prime uh, sleeping hours for normal people, but not for your everyday average uh, childless alcoholic cokehead. But he sent me a very long, wordy message saying that um, if I didn't stop lying about him doing cocaine because that's a very serious offense, and the FBI really is after him, and I am going to cause great harm to his loved ones because of my lying about his, him doing cocaine, he's going to sue me. He said he will, he, will, he will spend every penny that he has to sue me. That's the funniest thing I've ever fucking heard. So uh, you talked about their, they, they live in a private a gated live, community with a bunch yes. of Jews? They live in the Poconos, the both of them. Mike and Jesse live in the Poconos, which is like the most Jewish part of Pennsylvania. And they both live in ski resort communities. So gated resort communities that have actual like gates that you have to actually go and show your ID to get in, right? Um, when you go past the gate guard, you drive up the street about a, a quarter of a mile, there's a synagogue inside you know why if you were the biggest anti-semite on earth why would you want to live around so many jews second of all how i know i I have people that i have friends like our property we've had in our family for years but like people that buy houses in hoas they get a background check done like especially a jewish hoa how did these people pass the hoa exam background check why would you want to live there as an anti-semite and B, how the fuck did we get in? Those are two questions. And where did the money come from? I mean, these have oh, to be pretty Jesse expensive houses. His, Jesse's had a house. He had a house in New York, and it was he sold it for a lot more money than when he paid for the house in Pennsylvania. That makes sense. Mike supposedly sold a bunch of Bitcoin. Okay. So I don't, I don't you know, that doesn't seem, you know, whatever. But, like, but the point is, is like, they were able to buy houses. That's cool and all. Uh, but... When you get when you have five thousand subscribers at their peak, I think they had like five thousand subscribers. That's fifty thousand dollars a month, dude. You know, that's that's a decent income 
for, for between how many people though? I mean, weren't uh, they putting up the jazz hands and everybody else? I mean, wouldn't I guess they weren't paying you? Yeah, when I got paid, I was getting paid to do Mike and the Mad Wop. You know, I got paid. Uh, it wasn't enough to live on, but it was a nice little. You know, it was, it was a nice little extra every month. It wasn't enough to live on by any means. Um, but I only did four shows a month. You know, or no, we were two shows a month because Mike and the Mad Wop was every other week, and Jazz and Jesse was the other one. Uh, and then Fascination, anybody who did paywall content got paid. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, um, so you <laughs> weren't really involved with them on a private level after after the fallout with me in 2018. Is that, no, is that... I was still friends with them. Like, I used to go stay at Jesse's house. Like, you know, we'd go, we'd go to do stuff. People, they, they have, um, you know, families that have property. They'd have big campouts. You know, I'd go to all those things with my family and go down there. Yeah, I, I was close what i considered close friends with them up until just a couple months ago and you didn't you didn't see anything strange about about their behavior in terms well, of in terms of being involved with cops no i never nobody was ever involved with cops what do you mean involved with cops nobody was involved with cops well in terms of in terms of the feds in terms of um what right. what exactly how the, how this whole thing progressed and, and if there were if there were feds involved with that, when you're inside the whole progression here. right but when you're inside and i was around in the inner circle when trs first blew up and so like being inside in that close to everything i didn't really see you know i was i was obviously taken by the whole thing yeah we're gonna change the world we're gonna save the white race you know we're gonna we're gonna take over media you know we're gonna do all this stuff we're gonna win look how much winning we're doing we're gonna win and we thought we were winning. You know, in 2016, they, TRS probably could have run a candidate or two, and they probably could have won locally. Well, also, when they're your friends, you look at them, you're making excuses for right. friends, right? Like, I mean, that's oh, just absolutely. how it works, right? Um, you know, when we were in California, person. no, dude, this is a fucked up story. Just, you want to know how they treat people? How they treat people? This is how these fucking people treat people. You sit in a car with a guy, do, do cocaine with the guy. Three months later, the guy gets kicked out of his pool party for doing cocaine, and do you think anybody stood up for him? After doing the guy's cocaine at a, <laughs> at a party. Yeah. Damn. By the way, you mentioned the cult mentality aspect, and that's something that's been thrown around uh, recently against Absolutely. America First, unjustly, I would say. But you mentioned that here in this situation, you brought it up unprompted. I was already thinking of that before the interview. But cult, man. They get, like, this sounds they like a legitimate they cult. gaslight their listeners. Every month they change their opinion on something, and they gaslight their listeners to say that what we talked about a month ago, we never said that. And anybody who believes that is fucking retarded. And they, ga- they keep their people constantly gaslit. They are literally libtars. They are libtars. They are racist liberals. That's all yeah, they that's are. That's what I've seen is that they, 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 promote, they promote whatever the media is saying, but then they put like a white nationalist spin on it. And this is something yep. that's, been, um, that's been coming up a lot. And, I mean, Richard Spencer uh, does the same thing. It's like, yeah, I support whatever the media says. I just, I just have a white nationalist reason for supporting it. I think that supporting the COVID, I mean, that's just un- un- unconscionable to me that they, that they told people to lock down and told people to wear the masks. And this mm-hmm. was a, this was a deadly pandemic and it was going to just wear the mask bro. You know, just do it to get by. Just do it. Just why, why would you want to do that? I'd rather, I'd rather wear the mask and tell the guy behind the counter about the Holocaust. What? Well, and, and, yeah. And they just kept talking about the Holocaust throughout the whole entire COVID Holocaust, thing. They, Holocaust. they didn't talk about COVID at all. And mm-hmm. it's like Mike said that the the economy that the, if the the quote unquote economy collapsing would mean stocks, and I said it's not going to mean stocks. Stocks are going to go back up because they're printing all this money. That, that what it's going to do is 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 cause mass inflation and suffocate the the middle class and the working class. That's what oh, this no, is going to no, do. No, no, no. These trillions. Yeah, MMT, bro, MMT. He was like fucking completely wrong. They have never been right. They're loud about it. They do the thing where they're like, if I'm the most loud, then I'm the most right. It's like the way blacks argue. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is the way that they cut themselves off completely from, I mean, the Ralph, the, this is a, like a public platform, right? I mean, right. people go on here as a, as a, as a public forum sure. and they've, uh, they've completely, completely cut themselves off from this show. They've cut themselves off from any kind of criticism at all. Um, in terms of all the stuff they promote and people who want to ask them about the jail thing. I mean, a lot of people wanted to, a lot of people wanted to ask what was going on there. A lot of people wanted to ask what was going on when they started promoting Cantwell, who right. again, admitted FBI informant. Uh, and w- did they not have a narrative? I mean, cause they, Mike said that I was working for the SPLC, that that's the only reason that I would even ask about what was going on with jail. That's the only reason I was at, would ask, I have mental health problems 
for I'm working for the SPLC. That's what that, that was his comment once his own people were rebelling, and his own people were rebelling a lot because Jo said he had sex with trannies in that in that audio, which um, it seemed to upset people more than the more than the Fed claims. But um, so they, they, were they talking about this in the background? I mean, what was what no, was they, going on because they were hemorrhaging users. Right, they did they did the thing where they let Jo tell you know, give an explanation. And his explanation was that he was spitballing ideas for a book. That's what the, that's what the, the, uh, the, the podcast was supposed to be about him and the other guy were talking about a book that they were going to write. And these were stories that were going to be in the book. That's the retcon that J.O. came out with in like 2018. Um, <clears throat> he disappeared. He's gone. He, from what I gather, uh, they made him sign an NDA and gave him some cash to fuck off. Well, they didn't do that. They didn't do that originally. Originally, right. they because that would have been really easy to say. Oh, well, we didn't know this about this guy. Right. Um, well, they didn't. They just they just said nothing. They do the usual thing where they just pretend it didn't happen and ignore it, and you know, and gaslight their listeners into you know that that just we, you know we don't need to talk about it. It's not even handle. Well, the goal seems to be to be a, a cult, to be a very small cult with devoted mm-hmm. with with a devoted tiny group of people, because they they don't they don't appear to be interested in any kind of outreach or expanding. Because I mean, you know, if, if you wanted to do outreach and expand your, your your audience, you would have to do things a lot differently than this. They seem to be very comfortable with being a tiny insular mm-hmm. group of neo-Nazi cultists who do you know. Uh, that this stuff that they produce, you know, if they do a march, I guess they did a march against Waukesha and made a documentary. I never saw the documentary, but that seems to be for internal consumption and to keep their own people thinking that they're that they're doing something. Um, That's all. Probably it is. they're getting individual donations from larger donations from certain people who are like sucked in. Because this is how a cult works, right? You know, a cult has a small number of people, but you get the the cult leader gets people to give like huge amounts of their personal income, you know, 10% or 20% or something. So that was Scientology or um, right. any of the, any of the major cults. Oh yeah. No, de- most definitely. They have a couple of, you know, big donors. Um, like I said before, the guy that owns the barn, um, one of their guys, one of the NJP guys, that's his, that's his address. He's registered at the barn. So they're definitely, and, and again, strikers website that could take national hyphen justice um, was shared a Google account with um the russia whatever it is the russia insider whatever it is that bausman's website was so they definitely i mean you definitely had that connection with that guy and that guy is is the seed oil magnet you know he's the guy from soya tech um he definitely i i know for a fact that that there was money being paid for you know for articles and stuff so they're not just getting they're not just getting subscriber donations you know what i mean they are definitely getting outside donations too so why do you think that they're so insular that they that they that they refuse to engage with anybody in the outside um, world at all? B- because fuck them, because they have contempt for everybody except for the little group of friends. Everybody everybody else sucks except for these eight people. That's literally how they act. So you don't think they're they're actually trying to throw a communist revolution or whatever? I don't. I think Stryker might think he is. I mean, I know that's like what he's always wanted to do. Um, like I said, one of the original TWP guys told me about Striker a long time ago, and it was like he fucks up everything. He's very ambitious, um, but you know he fucks everything up. So I don't know, man. I mean, Striker's got to be getting paid somewhere. You know, I mean, it's not from it's not from his striking Mike subscribers because for another thing that I've heard insider baseball on is that um, Sven hates striking Mike because the people that actually listen to it don't pay for the paywall; they just uh, download it off of somebody's. Thing off a pole like most listeners of striking mike just take it off a pole so he's not actually striker's not actually bringing in money it's kind of funny yeah i, I can believe that I, I can't believe that anybody that would listen to eric striker um would have very much money anyway right kind of like there's, that. there's that yeah he said um there was a the striking mike the other day where they're talking about the abortion oh my god dude their take on abortion is so terrible Oh, let me play that, actually. Yeah. Also, I was going to ask you, well, I'll just wait, since that's that's come up naturally. It's so, uh, it's let me so go fucking terrible. It. The abortion it, movement has always been that. And and I've always seen, uh, you know, people saying, like, it's it's a win or something. I mean, I guess it's like a win, but the thing is, it's a win for something that has always been there as a distraction. Conservative position of, like, okay, you, you, you should have, have to have a retard you, baby. You, no one wants have, that you either. Have, you have a- TRS was never, TRS and NJP were never pro-life. 
Mm-hmm. And so it's like, wait a second. So that's the new litmus test now. Right. Something you wouldn't have dreamed of making a litmus test too. Something that ago? you made fun of Ted Cruz for talking about in 2016. Yeah, something that was never going to be would never have been a litmus test for white nationalism. Like yes, we have to be against. Same we have to make. We have to make people have like mulatto retard babies. Like yes, it's just it's the same crowd. Yeah, it's, it's the same crazy. crowd. And, and and I think the common denominator there. It's not ideological. It's just that they're dumb. Well, it's, it's just like and this is a thing. It's like here's the thing. Go do the thing. Right. Explain like, this so so people that understand how this works because there are people that want to say this was a win that that was a win or these things are these are an example of a system being weak or something. Let me explain how they work this. They pick out issues that are materially t- kind of irrelevant or not very relevant to very many people and won't make much of a difference in terms of how actual power is brokered, but have a big moral component to them, right? There's a there's a moral argument. So there's an argument about abortion that is a very moral case, right? A very moral moralistic case can be made on on really either side, right? Of it. Oh. And they take these issues, although in terms of the actual rule that was being decided on, materially it's not particularly relevant. It only affects a very small amount of people, if any. Same thing with abortion. So they take these and they blow what? them up to be these big what? things. Yeah. They get everybody that? debating about these things that aren't materially very relevant but seem to have a big deal in terms of a world. Hold on, wait, wait. anyone from them should lead here. Hold on, I'll play that in a sec. I want to finish that clip. Same thing with abortion. So they take these and they blow them up to be these big things and they get everybody debating about these things that aren't materially very relevant but seem to have a big deal in terms of a worldview. Right. And they just get you debating that and hating each other based on opposite sides of that issue. Now, we played this earlier, and this was uh, startlingly off base. <laughs> As yeah. a take, if you ask me, uh, abortion, just a nothing issue, I guess. It's a nothing I mean, issue, dude. Yeah. It's literally nothing. It's just a, it's a fringe issue that nobody cares about. Well, most people don't feel that way, Mike. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, wow. You know, it's kind of an anti- animating issue here. So you embrace, em- embrace abortion to own the Jews. Right, Mike? <laughs> yeah. It's almost like it's part of his religious practice or something like that. It's, like it's almost like it's, yeah, it might be there. It's part of his, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, belief. The Lord. I don't know, but uh, what did you think about that, uh, mystery caller, Wayne Lynn? Uh, yeah, it's not surprising. I mean, they did the same thing with gun control. They they support gun control. So, I mean, it's not surprising. They seem to be, they, they seem to be based around putting out, like, leftist ideas in the, under the veneer of, of white nationalism, that seems to be the entire the entire purpose of their their thing that they do is to put to put out leftist ideas, just to gr- agree with whatever the leftist media says, and then say, well, this is this is white nationalism. I mean, the right. the, the, the retard baby thing. I mean, this is this is so like ninety nine point nine eight percent of abortions are elective. I mean, it's some it's some insane number. It's over ninety nine percent of abortions are elective. So. I mean, this is a this is a mass slaughter. It's all it's all Jews. It was it was pushed through by Jews. It's all I mean, even now it's all Jews protecting it and trying to trying to push this. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was all Jews on the Supreme Court. It's it's Jews that have kept it on the Supreme Court. It's all these Jews out there lobbying now, saying it's part of the Jew religion to kill children, um, which is a very strange admission on the part of the Jews. And this is something that. Okay, so say say you were you know a, a right wing guy and you just didn't really care about that issue that much. Well, the fact is that ninety nine, uh, virtually every single right wing conservative in America cares significantly right. about that issue. So if you wanted to have some kind of right wing movement, I mean that that would be something that you would keep quiet about if you just like didn't really care that much about abortion and you you would side with the. I mean, because what, what what are you even doing? Who are you who are you fighting for? If you're if you're not willing to stand up against abortion or stand up for gun rights or any of these or, or fight against COVID lockdowns, which is you know I mean how many amendments in the Constitution did that violate? I mean they shut down churches, right? Um, and and close close private. I mean it was it was a whole like at least three or four amendments of the Constitution were violated by those by those COVID lockdowns. Um, so if you're going to support all this stuff, that then then who is your audience and what is your what is your purpose? It ends up being just like you're making this for like edgy teenagers, and they mm-hmm. they also have like an internet defense force. I don't they're they're probably not they're probably all been banned from the chat because they're also it, aggressive. But yeah, they know. they used to have they used to have the uh, the TRS Expeditionary Force and they're the troll army. I was part. We used to go we used to go into discuss comments and get the comment section shut down in like 2016, 2015. Right, 2017. Then we all started getting banned. But yeah, and all those guys in the TRS changed their message, and all the good people that were good at that left. They're still, they still have their trolls and their their little internet defense force. They just suck. They're all like 18-year-old edgy kids. 
Yeah, it seems um, like but, like if you were involved in Satanism in the '90s, like instead you would be involved with like this weird TRS <laughs> communist right. thing. Right. Well, you know, you said you said they were for gun control. Yeah, they're for gun control because it's they do it racist though. That way, blacks and illegals don't get more guns. So we have gun control. It's because, but it's because racism that we want it. They take everything that's leftist, libtard point and put a little bit of racism on it, and that makes it okay. So did you already say what your final final falling out? Yeah, was? I was gonna go back did to that. Couple, Let's double back to the that. Final falling out was yeah over the COVID stuff, dude. Like we were we were talking about how the you know the mandate the mandates were doing and like it was forcing people to get the vaccine. Nobody's getting forced. You know, there, there was like that whole back and forth with that. Um, and then their take on it being MERS, and we just made fun of that. And then we came up with the term bug nat, which is like um like a bug man nationalist. <laughs> like, you know, like you, the Holocaust was definitely fake, but the moon landing definitely happened. And also uh 9-11, uh sure it was Israel, but uh you know, it was Israel that paid the Arabs to fly those planes. You know what I mean? It's just they're um uh Adam I don't know, they they just don't no other conspiracy could ever be real other than the Holocaust, right? So we came up with that and apparently that hurt Mike's feelings because it hits you close to home because all they talk about is Star Trek and Transformers figures and uh the Holocaust. So that's what a bug net really is. Anyways, and then it was like we were mean to them and so we were told uh, everybody told them to kick us off their network. And Jesse was like, well, dude, you're like my best friend. I can't kick you off the network, but like, could you just tone it down a little bit? And then something else happened and we did it again. Cause you just can't not make fun of how stupid their fucking takes are. I'm sorry. Like when they go directly after stuff, like they say stuff about my show, we say stuff about their show. This is kind of how it is. Like, so it's just, it's just bands, right? It's just bands. Well, they didn't like it was bands. So then they were like, okay, you guys are doing Alex Jones tier conspiracy stuff on COVID. Mike's trying to do politics and he can't direct people in the direction he wants everybody to go if you guys are misdirecting people on purpose. I was like, what? Okay, fine, we'll leave. I'm like, we'll leave. That's totally fine. We'll leave. And they're like, no, 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 no. Well, wait, no, we're kicking you off. You're not leaving. I'm like, okay, whatever. It's fine. So we left. That was really it. And then after we left, they started calling us fake white nationalists, and we were um, gun guarding for Zionism. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did they use that term? Did they yes. really? No, they did not. Are yes, you kidding did. me? <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, I swear to you, no. if I can find the clip, no. Raph, if I can find the clip, please. I'll send it to you. Please, God, I have to hear this. Yeah. It's Sven having another hissy fit meltdown because Thool Tide has constantly <laughs> owned them. Like on right, so I I reposted a Thul Tide thing that owned TRS, and it was like the one that where Thul Tide called Mike a fat retard because he is. Um, but yeah, why didn't he lose weight? Mike, I don't understand why they don't do anything. They're the laziest people ever. They get paid to do they get paid to do fucking radio. Um, you would think you would think they'd be in shape. No, I guess round is a shape. Mike is fat. Mike has moves. <laughs> like like Mike has a gun. I've seen it. Especially like, I've seen doing it. coke all the time. You know, I mean, he's like he's like the Chris Farley cokehead, I guess, right? The fat cokehead. No, I thought he got in shape though. I thought he, I thought he's like. He started now. to for a minute and then he stopped. Mm. Look at the look at the Akron, look at the Akron action that they did, and Mike's got moves out there in that polo. Do you think I could take him in a foot race if we if we went head up? Maybe we should. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think he's very athletic. I don't think Mike's dash. very athletic. Yeah, hundred yard dash, me. No, Mike I think you could because Mike is like has me, like a zero when it comes me, to me. Mike Zinovich, hundred yard dash. That's right. <laughs> I want to see the, the final showdown. That's right, the final <laughs> showdown. <laughs> boxing, <laughs> right? Yeah, fuck boxing. Yeah, nah, no, that's played so, out. So Let's so do a race. That we were gun, he said that we were gun guarding for Zionism, and we were massage shills just like Thule Tide, and we are the enemy. And I was like, you know what, dude? Fuck you. I thought we were friends. You actually are telling your listeners who actually come and attack me and my friends for because all of a sudden now we're the enemy all your army turns on me because that's how cultists act right it's just like the, they're like racist what they are is right-wing npcs these racist listeners that that listen to trs well you would have to be borderline like schizophrenic like to to go from because listen like in in 2015 2006, I mean, up until Charlottesville, and then even a little bit after Charlottesville, like, I was on the same page with these people, and mm -hmm. I've been on the same page since since I started my site in um, 2013, and I, I had, you know, it took me a while to, sure. to get to where I was, but I, by the time I started my site in 2000, 
13, um, I, I've had the same views since then. So to see people like have those views or they develop to those views, because they when I when I first talked to them in like 2011 or whatever, they were like libertarians who were first becoming like racially aware or whatever, and kind of struggling with the Jewish issue. But whatever, you know, everybody go through, goes through this process. But then to go through that process and then transform into like communist liberals where they're talking about, I mean, yeah. this, what's his name? I'm sure he's a cop. This Tony. Um, uh, Hover? Hover? Yeah, yeah. But his eyebrows, they, they brought, you know, we call him. He looks like he's Michael Aquino's uh, moonchild. He probably is. You know, Michael Aquino with the eyebrows of the church is set. Yeah, yeah. Temple is set, yeah. I know he is, yeah. yeah. He, was, uh, oh, he was in the, which, he was in the government. He was in the, in the Air Force. He was like special yeah. ops in the Air Force. He did all the, he did all the psychological yeah. shit in Vietnam, yeah. Yeah. He, he probably is uh, Michael Aquino's love child. <laughs> um, the eyebrows, but, yeah. nobody else has those eyebrows. But he was saying stuff about, I, I can't remember what I was going to say. He was saying now. Oh, uh, I, I remember when, when COVID happened, um, he was posting um, that it wasn't government oppression to, to be locked down. And he posted a picture of uh, Waco being firebombed. And he said, this is what government oppression looks like. And it's like, okay, so you can't complain about your, your government taking your rights away until they firebomb you. That's the, that's right. the argument here. Right. That's I saw that too, and I was like, "Wow, this is a guy. This is a guy who doxed himself to the New York Times, and then when he got doxed, TRS raised like forty grand for him." I mean, how do you how do you not expect to get doxed? How do you not expect to get doxed when you get interviewed by the New York Times? Yeah, that's a good question. But then he got brought in. Um, mm -hmm. He got to brought TWP. in. TWP. He he became he, TWP management after the after the box broke. He basically took over TWP. And he's like a hipster with that merge with the current uh, TRS fake and JP. Yeah. Party. Yes. Yeah. LLC. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know, man. It's it's a lot of shady shit. Um, yep. I I I, uh, I think they're involved with with the, with the FBI on some level. I, I just can't I I can't believe they're they're not. But I can see how you wouldn't. You wouldn't notice that if you were if you were involved with them because I, I don't think it's um you know, I don't think it's real direct in terms of uh, getting point by point by point talking point but you have to wonder about some of these talking points like why would you even be saying these things I, I don't even know why like just like that abortion clip you just played it's like well why would you even what's the what's the purpose of even saying that it's, mm -hmm. it's bizarre there's no reason for that like just don't have a take you don't have to be didactic on everything. Like, you know, you don't have to have a take on literally everything. You can, you can choose to say nothing. Well, um, you know, I was approached by the feds, by, by an Israeli trained FBI informant um, in 2000, 2013 or 2014. So um, these people go to everybody. They, they, they go to everybody and try and talk to them. And I, I know for, I, there's no way they didn't go to TRS and they didn't go, um, to Matt Weinbach or any of these people. And so, I mean, if they're doing, if they're doing cocaine all the time, I mean, it's just not, it's not believable. They're not involved in some level on some level uh, with that, but it, it ultimately just doesn't even matter. I mean, cause what they're saying is so stupid and so poisonous um, that I just can't imagine anybody going along with it. But I mean, I, I don't really think hardly anybody is at this point. I, I, I can't, I mean, how many followers do you think they have? They can't have, I mean, I don't know because again, paying paying followers or followers followers, because there's a lot of people like I said that that just like scab their stuff off a pole. Yeah, I can see I, I I can see some people just listening just to see what they're saying. Sure. Mm. I don't. I mean, there's their core group is probably like seven hundred guys, maybe. Maybe. How do you think somebody goes changes their views like that because of a podcast though? Because if you like if you agreed with them in 2015, 2016 and you agree with them now, you would almost have to have some kind of schizophrenic to be able to right. change your views that much. That's that's why I'm friends with the people that are no longer friends with them. You know, because we were all friends back in 2015, 2016 when we all had the same opinion on things. We still have the same opinion on things. We just don't talk to TRS now. You know. They like they're, they're totally fine to have lost every original friend they've ever had. Everybody who was ever associated with any of their stuff 
did content for them, whatever. They don't, they don't care because the new guys, you know, the, the post Charlottesville people, because there's a lot of people who found out about TRS because of Charlottesville. Why don't you think they care about money though? I mean, they were, I mean, they were making for a while. They were making $50,000 a month. You know, I'm sure that's been well invested into some stuff to where they're probably comfortable for however, you know, investments like Jesse was just talking about his Pfizer stocks paying him off, you know, so I'm sure, I'm sure they what made the a killing f- on the anti-white vaccine. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a joke? Uh, no, he, he was on no, a show. I mean, was he joking? Do you think he was joking? No. He his Pfizer stock is paying off. No, dude. He was talking about, no, he, he was talking about his stocks. He made it because they made a, a dividend or some shit. Yeah, no, they do that. Yeah. And he, yeah, like, that's not usually what you want to talk about, you know, when people that you listen, that listen to your show have to deal with the vaccine mandates that don't exist, but totally exist. Yeah, they exist, man. I mean, they, mm-hmm. this really ruined everybody's life. And it's the most, it's like the most root populist issue. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you look at like how popular Marjorie Taylor Greene is. And like, if you're an anti-Semite, I mean, she's come pretty close in a because she, I don't really think she cares about like Christian Zionism or whatever. So she's come a little bit close. But what, you know, if you're a right winger and you want to like get basically, you just want to take, I mean, at least in my view, what my view has always been is you want to take like normal white people and get them on board with this thing with the Jews. Like you just want to get people on board with that because everything else is pretty much, I, I pretty much agree with Marjorie Taylor Greene or any other any other Republican um, on, or at least in terms of what they say, what their, what their talking points are, I, I pretty much agree, except when it comes to the Jews. I mean, when it comes to, you know, these abortion, gun control, all, all these issues down the line, I, I agree with a normal conservative on, on just about everything. So, I mean, it's like if, you're, if your primary issue is really the Jews, which they, they'll say that apparently you're saying they say seed oil is a distraction from the Jews, but if that was really what you believed, then you would, even if you didn't agree with white conservatives about anything, you would still want to reach that audience and then just inform them about this Jewish thing to get, to, to get your agenda through. I mean, at least that's right. You know, that's how I always viewed it. You would, you would think that, but they don't, they hate conservatives the most. They think that converting Bernie bros is what's going to save the white race. But how, uh, yeah, I, I remember that meme, that, that, but it just, I mean, it's only or meme. It's, it's only or meme. It's never, it's never happened before. There's no, there's no, there's no recorded person. I mean, maybe there's somebody somewhere, but you know, the, the, the old alt-right was all like libertarians and, you know, pe- people, younger people who had grown up in conservative households. Um, it was exactly where you would expect white people to come from. Um, trying to convert leftists is, is just stupid and um, is, is not going to bear any fruit. It hasn't borne any fruit yet so it's just a it's a crazy thing and you wouldn't do that unless you were you had some other kind of agenda at work oh yeah there's definitely another it seems to be another agenda at work um like what do you think that is i don't know de-radicalizing um or just coasting into retirement maybe i don't know uh to grift maybe to using njp to grift off of white racial politics until they can retire like, I, I honestly don't know. I don't know that they're going to run candidates. I don't know that they're, but I know that they're doing these little, um, you know, these little uh, justice for so-and-so, you know, um, protests in little towns. They just did one in Akron. But, and then there was one in um, Dakota, North Dakota, the justice for Jupiter. So I'm sure they're going to be doing more of those, you know, and those, those, uh, those, you know, they have, they get, they get donations for that. Um, I've never seen an event where Mike went to where he didn't leave with a pocket full of cash. You know, people give them cash donations all the time in person. Yeah, that must be. So they make, they're, I think, you know, they have a core group of their, their cult members, you know, the ones that will go to all the manias. They'll pay the 200 bucks or whatever it is to go hang out with Mike and Jesse for the weekend. And, um, you know, those people, those, there's those people, they'll, they'll always pay for the paywall. There's probably a few hundred of them, you know. So I, I think that they have enough now. You can tell by who's, you know, by who's on the shows. It's like, who's actually getting paid all the paywall shows are like, you know, jazz and Jesse is now just Jesse. And he's got, that's another... the other thing when I posted that, cause I, I, you know, I wasn't friends with him, but Halberstram, um, he quit the, the fascination after I posted that stuff about jail. Um, he quit at that time. So 
thought that was that was interesting. Uh, that because I think he said that they they've known each other like in real life. So I, to me, it looked like that he had seen suspicious stuff behind the scenes because I mean, Jazz Hands was like pro America. I mean, he was the mm-hmm. one who was like on board with Donald Trump and like that this is what we're gonna do. You know, I mean, you can go into the details of this stuff, but he he was more of like a, like we want 1950s America basically. We just right. American nationalism. And that's what he he was the he was always the smartest and. Um, you know, and to see him get on board with this weird costume march, shit, this creepy shit. I mean, it's creepy. This this neo this weird neo Nazi stuff with fat guys marching around in stall helms and talking about screaming about. You know, we've seen their screams. The screaming about socialism. We're talking about why are we? Why are they talking about so? Who who is this targeted at? Right, because the only people that are into socialism are uh, leftists. So liberals and brown people so i don't don't know who they're trying to white people communism you know trailer park nationalism white trationalism they call it (laughs) that's a good that's a good word for it yeah um Um, you know the trailer park nationalism drinking buddy nationalism that's really all it is i mean like you know mike and jesse you know mike's never had any real friends in his life now he has people who think he's god and he's going to save the white race and everywhere he goes he gets treated like a superstar you know so he's he they're they're milking it. They're 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 doing their deal. That's cool, you know. Good for you. But like, you're not saving the white race, you know. You're not. You know. You know. I don't know what you're doing, but you're not saving the white race. None of the stuff you guys are doing is saving the white race. You guys are race hustling now. They're like the white. They're like the white race hustlers. You know. Every every racial group has its hustlers. And JP is yeah, going to be one of white. Be, that does seem to be what they want to be. Is like is like a uh, Al Sharpton for white people. Mm-hmm. Which some people say is a good thing. Trend. Some people say it's a good thing. Well, it could be a good thing, like in some way, if you were actually like supporting white people. But when you're out there, like saying you're pro-abortion and anti-gun, right? Um, like the, the two biggest constituencies, like the, what they like. Excuse me, your biggest constituent. What would be your biggest constituency? What they like is they're anti-abortion and they're pro-gun. You know, I don't know if you guys know like this. Those are the core issues for most yeah. for most normal white Americans. Those are like the two biggest issues, mm-hmm. which. I mean, we can say we, we there, there, there's that there's other problems, but what you do, I mean, if you if you cared, what you would do is start with those points and then show how. I mean, it's not hard to show that Jews are behind gun control and abortion. It's not. It's not. You know, it's not a secret. You know, it's pretty pretty straightforward to lay out the facts here and say these names. We got to list the names here on both these issues, and uh, right. there's, there's something there's something going on here. So, I mean, it's 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 obvious to me that that's that's where you start from and where where you go if you're. Um, if, if you're trying to take care of white people, if you're trying to help white people, it's, it's just seems very, very straightforward and obvious. So, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what these people, what these people are doing. I think it's sick. I think it's, I think they're exploiting people. They're, they're, they're viewers. They're lying to them. Um, and just confusing people. But I guess on some level, you're all, like I said, the, the, these are people who would have been Satanists in the, in the 1990s, you know, it's just like an antisocial, like if you right, want to well, be like an antisocial person because you have problems with your, you know, divorced parents or whatever, this is like something that you would get involved with. Dude, yeah, it's it seems very much cult of personality, um, you know, uh, cool guy to you know, cool guy to hang out with, want to hang out with a superstar, the leader of the movement. You know, these are the leaders of the movement. They're literally just you know, unemployed podcasters. And probably most people listening right now don't even know who these people are. Right. And that's the, another thing. They're not that big. They're not that big. No. Ran like we had 20,000 20, subscribers on YouTube mm-hmm. when we started getting banned. And for us, I was like, 20,000? That's freaking huge. For somebody that nobody's ever heard of before, you know, the Paranormies? Like, that's freaking cool. You know? Um, I, I know we're nobodies. You know what I mean? I know we're, we're a fringe we're a, a fringe group when we have a fringe, you know, we have, we have, we have a decent amount of listeners, but we, we're, we're in a very minority, you know? Um, people send guys... me your shit. Nobody sends me anything from, from TRS. People send me your stuff pretty regularly. Yeah. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. But, um, yeah, these guys, like, you can only say white people good, black people bad so many times, you know? Now, let me play these super chats. Uh, Rand has been sitting on a stream snipe crying about us. I haven't been able to hear what he said. I've just seen his um, his chat crying and um, whining. And, uh, you know, I invited him to call in, of course. Uh, I don't know why I would do such a thing, actually. Mm. So people in chat got violent, violently 
opposed when I said such a thing, actually, because they used to have to be tormented by Rand every other night on this fucking show, and they would routinely tell me, get rid of that fucking idiot so we can hear the guest speak once in a while. So I don't know why I would voluntarily invite him back, but if you're not too big of a pussy, of course you're welcome to call in. Rat bot, but uh, I won't hold my breath. I won't hold my breath. Now let me. Uh, Tell Mike Enoch to call in. Why, yeah, why do we definitely. always? Why does he always show this fucking drunk Australian guy? I mean, tell tell Mike Enoch to come in and defend himself. Well, we know that won't happen. But uh, yeah, that's you know, he's welcome to come on too. Um, you know, Rand hates you more than anybody for some reason. Uh, maybe that'll get him over here. I don't know. He's pathetic. I, I just thought he was already watching the show. He might as well. Might as well stop by. They said I was begging him to come on. Not quite the contrary. I just, I just thought it was funny that this is supposed to be his day off, by the way, uh, and he's he's on somebody's some side stream watching this stream. This he's not even supposed to be streaming. Keep in mind, it's like okay, well, I mean, if you really if it's burning you up that bad, why don't you just jump on here? You've been on here plenty of times before, but uh, anyway, let me play this. Anonymous sent ten dollars. Mike Enoch married a Jew. Matt Heimbach dated a Jew Ashley Ray at Communism Kills. We must protect Nick from that Jewish American princess Laura Loomer smile. <laughs> Fresh Gordon sent $3. National Justice Party sounds like something Jesse Jackson would start our big ass <laughs> <Elvis Pell Shopton. laughs> Randbot's fat ugly wife sent oh, $3. Oh. Oi, Jubit. I watched the little quadrant nigglet so you can call minute. into the show and defend your Jew pig master. Oh, if you're a card of half free Arvo monkey boys can work a computer. Wait a minute. That's a big if. Now, wait a minute. That was... That was William R underscore 33 sent $3 fucked up that super chat. You and Johnny said Mike so may time lol. To correct the record to him. Keep up the great work Ethan and Johnny. Thank you man. I knew exactly what you meant. I knew exactly what you meant there. <laughs> Um, all right, now let's see. I'll make sure I didn't, uh, okay, let's see. So, uh, I have a question. Oh, What's up with all well, their Fresh Gordon sent three dollars, Johnny and Anthony, oh, okay. to a paranormies about Jewish ritual killings. All right, now, what did you say? And I'll play the other ones in just a second. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, um, finish the super chats. Okay, super all right, chats. all right, let me finish. Anonymous sent three dollars. Finn browses Kiwi Farms, I think. He knows about Null and talk to him before, I think. Let's see. I don't know about that, but I wouldn't surprise. Wally sent three dollars. Just admit you, Wallaby, is qualified as Rand to speak on these matters. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. Should I get a? Yeah. Oh yeah, this one didn't get out of here. Anonymous sent three dollars. What are your thoughts on Warren Balaf? If anyone from them should lead TRS, it should be in my field. What do you think about him? He's he's pretty smart. Um, he knows a lot about he knows about a lot about white nationalism. Uh, his dad was part of was the National Front or whatever the National Alliance, William Pierce's group. Um, so he's got heritage. You know, he's got that he's got that uh, bona fides going on because um, his dad did stuff for Pierce. Um, he seems pretty well spoken. Uh, he's supposed to be a Christian. He never sticks up for Christianity or Christians at all. Uh, when these guys go hardcore atheists, you know, super fedora atheist, kite on a stick type stuff. Um, uh, they, he never says anything about it. So, I don't know. He married Emily Yukis, who did that weird masturbating with a cross nude out in the woods in some black metal video. And that weird freaking Alfred the dog cartoon that's, like, really deranged and degenerate. So, I don't know. I don't she know. does have huge she, tits, though, her. I will say. Her What's that? She does she have huge tits, though. Did, he, oh, did, yeah, did sure. he marry her? Wow, I didn't know they got married. I just knew yeah, she was on all the shows. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, family. What? Yeah. Are yeah. you serious? No, see, yeah. I don't even keep up. I just know she went away for a while, and then she started popping up on all the shows, and I was like, oh, she's back. Yeah, I don't and know. And, like, I didn't balloon, know the background to it at all. The balloon. But, yeah. Yeah. Unless her tits are still huge, I assume, but I, that, that doesn't sits, really yeah. change. Yeah. That doesn't really change. But, uh, I've known her since uh, she came out to California to hang out with Baked. And she ended up not hanging out with him. She ended up staying in Berkeley, and um, and then went back to to Philadelphia, I think. But uh, yeah, I I met her in twenty seventeen, early twenty seventeen. So What's your experience? For a bit. What's your experience with her? She's just I don't know. She's a uh, seems kind of autistic. She's got that girl autism going on. Um, she did the video she's got a running. kid now. Like I hadn't seen her. I saw her that one time in California for a couple of days, and then I saw her a couple of years later recently with her kid. 
And so she's still kind of autistic, but now she has a kid. So whatever. I guess you can reform people, but that shit she did before she was married is just really fucking out there. I don't know. I don't if I if I found out about that before I got married, I don't know if I could have gotten married. She think he might have pulled the plug on something like that. He might have just said, mm. I mean, masturbating with a cross in like yeah, a black metal video. I've never heard that before. Yeah. It's like something she that, did. It was in like a metal video? Something, yeah. It, was, I don't, it might not have been a metal video. It might be like, a, yeah, it's a metal video, like a black metal video. And she's like naked in the woods, masturbating with a cross. Well, and you know, uh, T- Matt Hanbach, what is it, TWP, they had a tranny in their group too. Mm-hmm. The guy who crossed, he wasn't a train, he cross dressed. He was just cross dressed. He just wore a dress. He was like Klinger from MASH. He wasn't really a trainee. He wasn't trying to be a woman. Like he had a beard, you know, he just liked to wear dresses. Yeah. 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 And everything with TRS, why is it gay? Like pool parties, that's a gay reference. Uh, standard fuck party, that's a gay, definitely a gay reference. Standard whatever party, that's a gay reference. Um, everything they do, the colon report, really? Didn't um, they have some gay scandal too? Oh like, yeah, then there was that. They had there was a group called Fashy Faggots on Facebook. It was a secret <laughs> group where they were like they were like gay Nazis. Yeah, they would like trade dick pics and stuff. They would always add like the guys, the straight guys they thought were cute, and like they, those guys would come back to the regular group and were like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I just got added in the faggot group." Ah, uh, they don't. They were like, "Why is there a faggot group?" So there was officially a faggot group. Oh, yeah. It was a private little chat. I don't know how many guys were in. There's a couple. I knew of a couple of the gays. And they, they actually have got somebody that was outed as a homosexual, too, that was involved, and he uh-huh. was, like, booming. I, I, I can't even remember all this stuff. It's been so long. Oh, that's, yeah, that's were... supposedly the, the ghoul thing with the younger kid. He had a buddy who was, like, like 17, and they were, like, either, you know, he was grooming him. I don't know that that's true, so. Well, I thought that he was meeting that somebody maybe it was cool was meeting like younger boys on their forums and then that oh i don't know about that out about it and they yeah, try to cover it up I, that i don't know about personally i have heard that story i don't know about personally um i do know that there were gays and i knew the gays and they were cool because they were nazis man you know they were they were uh you know they knew that they had to close the oven behind them you know when they got in they were going to be last you know, but they were going to, but like, you know, you need the gays because without the gays, you wouldn't have philosophy. Without the gays, you wouldn't have this. Without the gays, you wouldn't have that. Like, bullshit. But anyways, yeah, they did some gay coddling. Well, that, there's and another it's like, issue it's like, on the it's, list. It's like Jesse's friend, you know, it's his buddy. You can't tell the guy who's technically in charge who he can and can't be friends with, you know? There's that. Yeah. How did they end up just falling out so, I mean, I won't say, I'm using violently as a figure of speech, not literally violently, but, you know, a nasty fallout like this with you, and you'd been tight with them for years and years. I Believe me, I know how it goes. Uh, so I guess, you know, uh, I could talk about my own stuff. I'm the interviewer here, though. But how did it happen with you uh, to the point of, uh, you talked about it a little bit, I guess, at the beginning of the interview. How yeah, they just, just kept talking life. shit, calling, you know, calling us names. Um. I know they were talking shit behind closed doors because that's what they do. And then they make comments on, on the show and, you know, and people tell us about it and we just, I just, we just got tired of it. And uh, what really happened was there's this guy on telegram named Typhus who has a chat and Typhus is Tavistock Institute or something like that. And so he was talking about NJP. So I made a comment in the thread and somebody else made a comment. And I made another comment. Well, come to find out, the person that I was replying to was a person that was a sworn enemy of TRS. And I was conversing in <laughs> with the enemy. And literally, Sven had a hissy fit and banned me from everything. That's what happened. That's literally what happened. But that so was, was your like, best friend there, Sven, right? Like, What's that? Sven? That's my, yeah, Sven, that's my best yeah. buddy for six years, seven years. Yeah, that's what he does. Yeah. So why did he make the call? I mean, did he ever he have a conversation with you? To this, it was, apparently, it was Pikachu. Who is a Romanian <laughs> who supposedly docks this, them? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, but still, it's so, like Pikachu. You were talking. Oh my God, you were talking to Pikachu. Like, what I was the like, fuck? Uh, like, yeah, I, like, dude, literally the most high school gay bullshit. Cut my kids out of their kids' lives. Cut my wife out of their wife's friend group. Like, you know what I mean? This is the kind of shit that these people do, because I literally said something to somebody that they don't like. Literally, it's literally the literally gayest thing ever. Pikachu. What was that? It's a cult. It's a, the, yeah. the way they operate is like a cult, and that's right. that's what they don't let they don't let their cult members talk to anybody. That's like they, you know, none of them are allowed. Uh oh. 
Are you mm-hmm. up? Okay, I was about to say, you're still there, right? Uh, all right, it cut, it cut out for a second. It's probably just his connection. Uh, we'll wait and uh, see if he pops back in. This happens periodically. Let me see That's if I can okay. play a super chat here. Uh, I think we're caught up. Let me look. No, I think there's at least one that I haven't played. Let me see. Um, for sure. Let's see. No, we played that one. Oh, we didn't play this one. Oh, let me see. Alright. Fresh Garden sent three dollars. So I am for the game. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Wanglin? If you can hear me, I might shoot him a message. Oh. Uh, and we'll see. I think the uh, connection might have gone. Let's see. <coughs> Cut out. Okay. Let's see. That was from earlier. A connection issue. We'll get him back in here. Uh, here right, I'm going to have to actually. I got to work tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, now, let me ask you. I guess that is kind of a. I mean, we've been going for like. I don't even know how many hours now. Two and almost two and a half hours. Yeah, two, two and a half hours. Um, let me ask you, I guess, just how <clears throat> how's things gone with your show since the fallout kind of lead into the Dude, final part? We're doing fine. We're doing fine. We, we have, uh, like I said, we have a new RSS. We've already got um, like 25,000 downloads in the first week. So that's very healthy RSS. for a podcast. Yeah. What's that? I said that's very healthy for a podcast for those who don't yeah. know. It. Yeah. Yeah, so we started. That's our first week on our RSS. So we do. We're doing okay. You know, we get we get back there. Like we were doing. We were doing uh, about ninety thousand downloads a week when we had our Zencast. And Zencast fucked really me well. over too. By the way, they kicked me off. Uh, yeah, and I've been with them for years, dude. Man, they're fucking dirty. They did me dirty, dude. I was just like, wow. They didn't return my emails or anything. They just fucking. Mm-hmm. I played them for years, dude. I was pissed. Oh, that was brutal. I, I, I we were with them. That. We had an account with Zencast from the very beginning. So, like 2014 or 2015, I got a Zencast account. And I never used it because we had SoundCloud and SoundCloud was better. Well, after we got after we got kicked out of everything else, we um we put we put it we put it on Zencast. You know, we had always had like a backup on Zencast, and so we'd been there for years already. So we yeah, 2014 or excuse me, 15. It, that's seven years, and they kicked us off after seven years. Dude. Yeah, I'd been on there like three, I think, two or three now, seven. That's just wild. I was pissed yeah. on mine. I mean, I've just it's just bad business to just drop somebody, not return their emails, not say anything. Um, I mean, I don't know. I I just was appalled just from a customer service standpoint. Um, you know what I mean? To just get yeah. completely fucked like that. Well, uh, we used to get the emails from Kieran from Zencast. Yeah, me too. You know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The Kieran guy. He seemed pretty cool. Yeah. He always he always Same. handled it. If they overcharge me, sometimes they double charge me and be like, Hey dude, you double charge me. And then they give me a free yep. month and like whatever they fix it but when it came to like they just shut us down I'm like bro what, what, what is even going on they just shut nope. us down and didn't yep. say anything and like no queries were answered and yet, like you said that kieran dude same guy i talked to and he was nice as could be for years um and mm-hmm. helped me out with some technical stuff and sometimes they they had like put a new back end in, and he was like hey how do you like it or whatever or ask me about it um, and then they just totally Fucking shift to years. I was like, wow, uh, it was crazy. Well, so. I think they got taken over by um, yeah. You their storage me. went to their storage went to Google. Yeah, I didn't know that. You mentioned that earlier, and I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Well, that makes a makes a little bit of sense, actually. Uh, yeah. I have to say. Uh, yeah, it, everything's either hosted on Amazon or Google now. So now tell people where they can find you. Promote your stuff. You can, you can find us at paranormies.com, paranormies.com. Also, uh, Tuesday nights live on Pilled.net, Odyssey, and DLive. We do the Nationalist Inquirer, um, and then it gets released on Wednesdays a podcast, and then on the weekends we we do a regular show. Actually, this week we're doing a live stream tomorrow night. So Thursday we're doing our weekend show, but it's going to be Thursday, and it's a live stream. So you should check that out too. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, dude, that's 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 the show. Let's have we you do. back on. Uh, I was just going to say, let's have you back on sometime soon, just to do a regular show um, yeah, outside of all this stuff. Now, obviously, it was going to be a lot of that tonight. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's gay. all that stuff is very, very gay. I mean, it's very, very childish, very, very gay, it's very gay. disrespectful. Like, dude, they're Terrible. just not good people. They're garbage humans. They they support abortion. They support seed oil. Mike had a fucking <laughs> nuclear meltdown over microplastics. Like, you eat a fucking credit card worth of microplastics every week, and he called it a non fucking uh, a non issue. He melted down over it literally. Um, these people have terrible takes. They they get they're gonna get their own people in trouble. Um, people lose their job following these people. People lose their livelihoods, their families following what these fucking idiots fucking say. 
you know, they're, they're a dead end and, and they've ruined a lot of people's lives. And they don't give a fuck. Mike actually looked at the camera when, um, what's her name, the alopecia girl, uh, Katie McHugh, she, she docks people yeah. for money because she needed money for insulin. Yeah. And Mike actually looked at the camera and was like, we don't owe you fucking nothing after, they, after her life was ruined. Like, really? That's how they feel about people after you've been kicked out. We don't owe you anything. This well, is, you know what? I do owe you uh, a thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, right, and like I you. said, uh, I know it's drama and all that stuff. Uh, but like, uh, I like, I would like to have you on just regular style uh, yeah, to do some of the normie style stuff, just to throw it in for a mix uh, to sure. give us some content diversity. So I'd love that. I'll stay in contact with you. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Big show tonight on the Kill Stream thirteen hundred live. Uh, thank you so much, Johnny Monoxide, Paul awesome. Normies podcast. Thank you. Have a good one, sir. See you, bro. Wow, that worked out. That worked out well. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.